Welcome back to Husky Stadium here on the campus of Northern Illinois University here in DeKalb. We get ready for the 6A state championship game between unbeaten Prairie Ridge and 12-1 Nazareth Academy. Take a look at our schedule. We just saw Phillips knock off Dunlap 33-7 to complete their undefeated season, a second state title in three years for Wendell Phillips Academy. Nazareth Academy and Prairie Ridge coming up next at 4 o'clock over on NBC Sports Chicago Plus Lake Zero. Zurich and Batavia, and then tonight to finish it off, 7 p.m., Dave Bernhard and Hub Arkish will have Loyola Academy and Lincoln Way East. We welcome you into the press box here at Northern Illinois, Nathan Believa and Mark Lindo. And Mark, 6A title game should be a great one. Two very storied programs, Nashville Academy and Prairie Ridge. Absolutely. Some fireworks expected today. Big time offenses, explosive plays, tradition in both programs, outstanding coaching in both programs. This is a Excellent matchup in our 6A title game today. A 27-game win streak on the line for Prairie Ridge. Let's take a look at our key players for today. We'll start off on Nazareth Academy. If they're going to end that win streak, it's going to be Isaiah Lee on defense having a big day. He's a one-man run record. 11 sacks, 28 TFLs. He'll be playing football at Iowa State next year. His goal today, disrupt the block schemes of a veteran Prairie Ridge line and free up his linebackers to make plays. This guy's a beast inside who plays both the one and three technique in their defensive line. On the other side for Prairie Ridge, it's Superman, Samson Evans, who does everything. Mr. All-Everything, a player of the year candidate, consensus All-Stater. He'll be playing football at Iowa, 36 rushing touchdowns, eight passing touchdowns, 44 accounted for. He returns punts, he returns kicks. He's electric and can score on every touch. A human highlight film. His numbers are obscene. He's fun to watch. 2,000 rush yards almost. 27 wins. You mentioned that. And you better watch his sleight of hand with his ball with his ball security today because he's a good one with the football. He'll keep us on our toes all day as he does the opposing defenses. They won this state title get late last year with Prairie Ridge. They look to have another one here this afternoon. 2017 football state final are brought to you by country financial take simple steps today at countryfinancial.com slash simple steps and by biagis where carry out and curbside pickup make it easy to enjoy the great taste of biagis at home visit biagis online at biagis.com Welcome back to Husky Stadium in DeKalb. Well, we are getting set for our 6A title game. It's Nazareth against Prairie Ridge. I'm Sierra Santos alongside Edgy Tim and Edgy Nazareth. It's a very diverse offense. What can we expect from that? Well, I tell you what, Sierra, it's really simple. You got all these weapons at Naz. You're going to fire them all at once. Everything you've got, throw everything you have. Devin Blakely, uh, Diamond Evans, Michael Love. Put Michael Love at Wildcat a little bit. Everything you have, you're going to throw it at Prairie Ridge today. And, and also, we're bringing a crowd to the football defensively. Sierra, we're bringing you. We're bringing everyone to tackle Samson Evans in that option game. And Prairie Ridge, uh, they're the only team today going for back-to-back -back titles. Uh, one name, Samson Evans. You just need one thing from Samson. One more epic performance. He's done it his entire career. You need one more in his last high school game. And again, defensively, if I'm Prairie Ridge, I want a couple of turnovers here. I want to change momentum and show that our defense can hang, certainly, with Nazareth Academy. Well, we only need one thing on the broadcast, and that's Edgy Tim. <laughs> Coming back, we've got kickoff from a 6A title game. Welcome back to Husky Stadium here in DeKalb on the campus of Northern Illinois University. The Roadrunners of Nazareth Academy looking to stop the 27 game winning streak of the Prairie Ridge Wolves. Let's take a look how they got here. The Roadrunners knocked off Springfield High and Danville in the first two weeks, scoring 55 and 54. Then they went defensively. They beat Sacred Heart Griffin by three. And then they held Providence Catholic to just seven in a game where the weather was a big impact last week in the cold weather down in New Lenox. Prairie Ridge, defending champions. They've won 27 in a row. They beat their rivals from Crystal Lake Central in week one. Then they beat Kerry Grove on a 66-yard play by Samson Evans with less than 20 seconds to go. They took out Willowbrook 42-7 and scored 42 again last week. 
to beat Hoffman Estates on the road and a chance to defend their title. Ready to kick off are the Roadrunners. There's Samson Evans, number 22. Nazareth won the toss. They elected to defer. And let's see if they keep it away from Evans right away. And he gets his hands on the ball, on the handoff. Little trick play to get it started right up the middle and to the 50. So they do, Mark, kick it away from Evans. But the Wolves are going to find a way to put the ball in his hands. And he almost broke it on the first play of the game. Well, they schemed that one all <laughs> week long. They start with this little reverse. Blocking steam goes to right. Samson Evans plants. Get him a touch any way you can. He's going to be in your screen all afternoon long. Oh, so close to finding home. He leads his team up to the line of scrimmage. Miko Wycheski, Justin Miko Wycheski caught that and then handed it off. Here's Evans. He'll try the right side, pick up a couple. You'll see that triple option all game long. Zach Goldbranson. And Jackson Willis will be the two with him. If it's not Evans carrying it, it's likely to be one of those two. They're both over 100 carries. There's Evans. He's thrown the ball just 51 times this year, completing 24. No interceptions, eight touchdowns. But look at that bottom line. 1,957 yards, 36 touchdowns. He has 45 total touchdowns when you mix in the return scores on the season. Cole Branson goes in motion, and Evans is going to keep it. Pick up a couple more. Take a look at the starters for the Wolves. That offensive line is where it gets started. You see Evans, Goldbranson, Kirchberg, and Jackson Willis, who we've already mentioned. Carter Evans, younger brother to Samson. He's a wide receiver, Cooper. Tom Wynn, the tight end. Then Riley Smith, Justin Grapethen, Ben Schultz, Jeff Jenkins, who's headed Iowa, and Tim McGuire on that offensive line. Six passes a game they average, so expect nothing but outside run here. Here's the pitch to Goldbranson, and he is driven out of bounds at about the 45-yard line, which will bring up fourth down. Three straight runs. They want to run the football 45, 50 times today at least. But field position early on as Nazareth gets a three and out. Now they've schemed six days to stop option football, something you haven't done for 12 weeks. Basically, you have six days to prepare, but position football by the Roadrunners early on to get the three and out. Justin Miko Wycheski is the punter, 20 punts on the year, averaging 37.2, the long of 42, and he keeps it low towards the right side, picked up inside the 10, down the sideline. Just shy of the 25 is where the Roadrunners will get it started. And they have a very explosive offense as well. And there's David Oglesby, one of the wide receivers, very talented. Diamond Evans will join him as the wideouts. As Oglesby will not be a part of the first play as he heads to the sideline. Bobby Grimes, the quarterback, he got the job midway through the season, Zach Stevens got hurt. He and Grimes had been splitting plays, and then it was all Grimes after Stevens got hurt against Joliet Catholic. About 50% passer, over 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns, three interceptions. They just had a player come onto the field very late, almost went 10 on 11 on that first play. His confidence has grown, has his practice and game reps have grown throughout the season. Grimes is under pressure immediately, rolls to his right, still being chased, and he found a guy in the middle of the field. It'll be a minimal gain, but it looked like that might be about a 10-yard loss as he rolled out to his right. We take a look at their starters off of the catch there for the road runners. Devin Blakely is in that backfield. Michael Love will be both in the backfield and split out. Diamond Evans and David Oglesby, who we mentioned, Austin Reifsteck is out there with Elijah Mozinski, Louis Steck, Gavin Smith, the center, Michael Rotolo, and Matt Keeler on the line. Here's a run left side, breaking free. Devin Blakely down the sideline, looking for that first explosive play. The Roadrunners are off and running in the 6A state title game. Beep, beep on that one. He got to the outside. It was Katie Bar the door. Took one hit, busted the tackle. Too much upper body strength for Blakely. 5'9", 180, inside handoff. Nice block at the point of attack. One missed tackle, and then Church is out because no one's going to beat Blakely down the sideline. The race is on, and only he's going to win. They've got a, a flag late. 
with 74 yards to the house. Late, late flag, which is down at about the 36-yard line. Clock in the back, number 17 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, first down. 10-yard penalty from the spot, so that'll bring it back, take those points off the board. And you know what's strange about that? You talked about the 36-yard line. Diamond Evans in your screen there trying to block downfield, something he's done dozens of times for Blakely all year. And I don't know who he could have blocked in the back because it was there was no one within 15, 10, 12 yards, 15 yards of Blakely down that sideline. So instead of a 74-yard touchdown run, they get it to the 47 of the Wolves and have first and 10. Blakely thought he had his 13th touchdown of the year and his longest run of the year. And now we've got a, another flag. Or do we get a timeout first? We got a timeout. timeout? So I think Prairie Nazareth Ridge. was charge, still a little stunned. They said Prairie Ridge, but they pointed to Nazareth. I think they were still a little stunned that those points were coming off the board and trying to figure out where they were on the field and what play they wanted to go with next. What a great run it was. Just the excitement of that on his initial touch. Casey Moran, their offensive coordinator, goes with Blakely trying to establish him early on after Grimes threw on the first pass. Let's take a look at that play again, Mark. We've got Blakely down the left side. Let's see if we can find Evans. Evans right there at the 35-yard line. Yep, he peeled back. He's, what, 15 yards behind the play there? Look yeah, at, so there's no need for that right block there. at all. Boom, left and side hit number 25. And it's still, quite honestly, a bang-bang call as far as the angle of that block, but it wasn't necessary. The touchdown run, would-be touchdown run, was 10 to 12 yards in front of him. After the timeout, Rives is going to put it in the air. He's got his intended receiver. And get it down to the 36-yard line. And that's Michael Love, the younger brother of Notre Dame starter and star Julian Love, who also played for the Roadrunners. Let's take a look at Prairie Ridge's defense. That D-line, Phil Koenig, Joshua Crandall, Jeffrey Jenkins, Joe Perhatz, Drew Norton, Jacob Oman, and Sam Concialdi, Kyle Colbringer, as well as they go five linebackers. And that play will run for nothing. They play a 3-5-3. Three, three. Mentioned Justin Miko Wycheski earlier as he plays both ways. Michael Pillify as well. And then Zach Orr getting the start at safety today. Number 15. And Blakely's now limping towards the sideline. We saw an early first drive injury really impact the 5A game. Let's hope we don't have a repeat here in the 6A. Coach Tim Racky, has been around a while. Won a few titles. Two different Just schools. A few. Yeah. <laughs> Working on the rings for the second hand now. Grimes looking to put it in the air over the middle. And incomplete. Off the hands. His intended receiver. Tight end Jack Lore. So Nazareth comes out kind of flinging a football across the field, trying to spread and extend this Prairie Ridge defense early on, which should indeed open up some rushing lanes for Blakely. Joe Perhatz, maybe the emotional leader of the team, saw 21 for Prairie Ridge. The Wolves having his hands in the air, trying to get his crowd, a big Prairie Ridge crowd here. Third and nine, and they have filled this side of the stadium very nicely. Down from Crystal Lake and slipping, going to the left side on third down. Now, bring up fourth down, Alex Carrillo, the ball carrier there, and just had his feet go off from under him. Inside hand off his feet. He had a blocker in front of him, Lewis Steck. He was following him, but the right foot just slid. First drive for the Roadrunners and, and a touchdown called back. And decision time here and there's under 10 seconds on the play clock. Fourth and 10. And I don't think they got that play off. There's the flag. They do have the wind at their back here. Now be fourth and 
15. Snap infraction on the center, five yards, repeat, fourth down. And now they're gonna punt it away. So a tough start for Nasser Academy. They have a touchdown on the board, a block that wasn't needed negates that touchdown, and now they'll have to give it up. You see Tim Racky, 97 wins at Nazareth, 18 and four in the playoffs with the Roadrunners. He won a bunch of state titles as well, Addison Driscoll. This one is booted straight out of bounds and in a market at about the 25, I think, is where he will stop. No, still walking out down the sideline to about the 30. Scoreless early on in the 6A title game. Scoreless in the 6A title game. We've had a pair of punts so far. Prairie Ridge ready to start their second possession. Let's take a look at their school bio from Crystal Lake up in McHenry County. Enrollment 1457. Newest of the four schools in District 155. Open in 1997. Maroon and Silver in the Fox Valley Conference. Mark Gilbert as the athletic director. Dave Whitson was their first head coach. Chris Shrimp was his offensive coordinator from 97 to 02, and then he took over as the head coach. And there is Coach Shrimp, 133 and 50, his record 38 and 2. The last three years with Samson Evans as quarterback. And a couple state titles, 2011 and 2016. So this is an established program with its own identity, the identity of option football. There is the pitch on the right side. Bill Branson. Close to the first down, and Evans took a hit on that pitch. That's what they want to do get in there and put a hand on number 22. Well, he should be hit every time. And if somebody's got quarterback responsibility, somebody's got pitch responsibility every single play. And what Nazareth needs to do is they need to flip that responsibility between defensive end and corner. There's the fullback ride, the pitch, great decision making by Samson Evans. A little bit of stiff arm to try to get a few more yards before the ultimate push on the bounds by Michael Love. Was enough for the first down for Gold Branson, who averages 9.3 yards per carry. That's a pretty good average. This time it is going to be Evans on the right side, and he's going to put his head down and pick up another first down. He averages 8.7 yards, and Jackson Willis is at 7.1. So when your three main ball carriers average 7.1, 8.7, and 9.3, you run clock and you chew up yardage. Well, you know, an explosive run by definition is any run over 10 yards. These guys almost average explosive plays, which is absolutely absurd. They were slow starting last year in the state title game in 6A. They trailed Sacred Heart Griffin 10-0. Then they trailed 17-14. And they scored the final 34. Here's the pitch. Branson tries the left side, and he's going to get another first down before he's pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line. And why wouldn't go Branson get to the outside when you're led by big number 77, <laughs> Jeffrey Jenkins, also an Iowa crew, go Branson. How about being like the second fiddle and you have 1,100 yards rushing, but great block by his pulling tackle. That's right, hitting the corner way out on the perimeter. He scored a touchdown in the title game last year in Champaign, ran for 100 yards on 12 carries. His quarterback, Samson Evans, set a 6A state title game record with 274 yards and four touchdowns. They ran for 544 in that game last year. And here, the hard snap count draws Naz offside for the penalty. Uh, defensive coordinator, Jeff Tumpain, he's been with Tim Rackey for 11 years. He only had six days to scheme for this. He's usually a 4-2-5 team, but you will not see five DBs today. You'll see those DBs walk up into the box. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine shirts now showing the blitz. Another one. Did it again. So that's a linebacker trying to time the case. Number 45 on the defense. That's the first down. Ethan Kirchberg went in motion, the 5'10 junior number two. He goes in motion and the linebackers came flying way too far across the line. And you could see Evans, his head moving. He did some voice influx there. And they basically moved the chains without snapping the football. Two encroachment penalties. Got to watch the football, not listen to Samson Evans' voice. Three 10-plus yard runs and then two 
penalties. Have him inside the 25. Evans keeps it. He's across the 20 and into the red zone. You mentioned Jeff Jenkins, number 77, 6'4", 280 pounds, an All-Stater. He and Evans both headed to Iowa, which means Isaiah Lee, who we talked about in the opening, going to Iowa State. He's going to look across the line in a non-conference game against these two for the next four years as well. And he and Jenkins might be lining up across from each other for the They're, next four years. They live just down the block from each other. They work out together. They lunch together. There's the handoff up the middle. And that is Jackson Willis, the junior, who averages seven yards per carry. Well, they can, they can beat you on the inside. They can beat you on the edge. They can beat you by extending the field both ways. And the decision-making by Samson Evans, just impeccable. Second Here. inside handoff, fullback. Boom. Hat to hat contact. Willis versus Love on that one. And Willis falling forward for the first down. Five first downs on this drive, one by penalty, the other's all on the ground, and Evans keeps it, the fake handoff that time, and he kept it, and got across the 10. They can still get a first down without scoring. That first down marker is just inside the three yard line. 44 touchdowns accounted for. <laughs> and you know, the, the amazing thing about his numbers, quite a bit of the time he's only playing like three quarters. You know I mean, because they've, Ran, had such big scores, he doesn't get to play a full full football game all the time. Ran for 327 last week, a career high in the semifinal, scored four touchdowns. Here's Willis up the middle, and he will score the game's first touchdown. Jackson Willis with his 12th rushing touchdown of the season. Well, they run off the blocks up front. It's Kona against Schultz, 300 pounds of Schultz on the right guard. Look at the decision making by Evans. He waits, waits, waits as long as he can to hand the ball off. And Willis, the bulldog, the grinder, pushes it in, punches it in inside the red zone, an efficient drive. And the offensive line were there first to celebrate with them. Still celebrating on the sideline. Kyle Colbringer, 69 for 74 on extra points this year. Connor Leiden, the backup quarterback, is the holder. And that is knocked right through. 7-0 for the Wolves of Prairie Ridge. Samson Evans led the drive with Zach Goldbranson, and then Jackson Willis finished it off for pay dirt. Prairie Ridge with the seven nothing lead. Number four, Jackson Willis capped off the drive Seven plays, 70 yards, all on the ground. Two minutes, 48 seconds, helped by two penalties as well. Offsides on Nazareth, picking up a first down in there. Ten-yard touchdown run by Willis, caps it off, and it is 7-0. Their offensive line, just, they, they have a different blocking scheme than zone, than power. They have a little bit of slide blocking. They know which direction the option's going to go, and then both the quarterback, Evans, and any of his running backs read off the blocking scheme. And it, normally, Jeff Jenkins is around a key block to free one of his backfield members for a touchdown. Kickoff is a low line drive of a kickoff towards the sideline. Jim Racky said he needs to move the football, move the chains, keep Samson Evans and his team on the boundary. That's one of their keys. He knew they had to create opportunities for their speed, i.e. Blakely, especially in Evans in the passing game, 11 in the passing game against Prairie Ridge, and also field position. So field position, pretty good start here at the 41-yard line. You'll take that start anytime. Well, Jackson Reitz was on the kickoff. You don't see a number 70 uh, on the kickoff very often. Six foot, 235 pound offensive lineman. Here's a running play for Naz. And Jeff Jenkins was holding on for dear life. If he didn't bring Blakely down, Blakely might have been off to the races like he was on that first drive. But Jenkins, the big defensive lineman, 6'4", 280, All-Stater. And he just grabbed onto the back of Wakeley's jersey and hung on. When you can run like that at that size, that's why he'll be playing <laughs> yeah. in the Big Ten. Yeah. Here's the handoff up the middle. And across the 50 are the Roadrunners. And 
they will move a lot of guys around. They mostly will put Jenkins on the outside, but he'll play a little nose guard for him as well. He holds down the run game, and that's exactly what they want out of him, and we saw him do it there on back-to-back -back plays. Oh, Marcus Griffin does pick up. Actually, no, he's a yard short, but they're, gonna, they're looking down the line like they want to measure. Nice blocks up front by Gavin Smith and Lewis Steck. And we will get a measurement. Center and right guard, Steckett Jr. Also a wrestler at the right time. Good look right there. Marcus, Marcus Griffin, sophomore, 229 rushing yards on the year, six touchdowns. And he picks up the first down there. Our officiating crew today for this 6 day tunnel game. They're all out of the Rockford Freeport area. David Everly is the referee. John Kester, the linesman. Scott Toleski, the umpire. Thomas Plaster is the line judge. And Michael Clark is the back judge. He's from Polo, Rockford, and the Freeport for the rest of them. So all out of the same area as these crews are for the state championship games. Congratulations to those gentlemen, that crew getting to work a state championship game as a crew this year. And here's a big hit right at the line. Three Wolves there to make sure Blakely couldn't break through. All gap responsibility by the Wolves defense. They put a man in motion, had a lead blocker in front, but just filling the gap was a good individual play to finish things up. That being uh, Meschikowski, but overall, that was a team tackle right there by the Wolves. Justin Miko Wycheski, number 20. Easy for you to say, <laughs> huh? I told you I was going to get you to say it at some point today. <laughs> Coach said they just call him Miko. Now we know why, right? Yes. We got a flag. A game on the offense, five yards. Repeat second down. Naz has been a little out of sorts since that first penalty brought back what they thought was going to be a 74 yard touchdown run for the lead. Did not seem to been, be in sync since then on offense. Well, Tim Racky will be able to regroup his team. He's been around a trench. He's got, what, nine state, eight state titles between these two coaches. So these guys not, not only know how to run a program, they know how to win state championships. They know how to keep both their team to pump them up. They know how to keep them on an even keel. Coach Racky's won state titles in 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A. And now we've got a timeout. They have had five penalties. In the first nine minutes and two seconds of this game. Nazareth averaging 38 points a game in the playoffs and looks a little bit out of sync. Take a look at their school bio for Nazareth Academy. LaGrange Park, Cook County, the multiplier, their enrollment 1,293.6. Columbia Blue and White out of the East Suburban Catholic. Dennis Moran, former head coach, he's the president. Son Casey is their offensive coordinator. Deborah Tracy, the principal. Dwayne Bucherus is the athletic director. Dennis Moran was the first head coach, started that program when Nazareth opened, I believe, the very late 70s, early 80s. They lost to Prairie Ridge in the quarterfinals in 2011. Prairie Ridge went on to win the title that season. Coach Racky and Coach Shrimp, they both talked about each other in our conference call this week. A lot of mutual respect, respect between these two coaches. They see a lot of themselves in the other. Hand off. Nope, fake the handoff. He's going to put it in the air over the middle. He's got a receiver. Spins on a dime and gets free inside the 30 for Diamond Evans. Diamond Evans runs a good route, but what a great play by Grimes. Play action pass. They go into a boot. There's the fake play action, boot pass, naked on that side all by himself. He knows Evans is down the middle. He finds a soft spot in the zone in front of the safety, makes a good catch, a spin move, some yards after the catch, and Nazareth in business. He had Oglesby, too, two wide receivers wide open on that play. Diamond Evans, his 30th catch of the year, averaging 16 and a half yards per catch. And here is the handoff up the middle. And going nowhere is Devin Blakely. Blakely, Blakely got off the snide with a touchdown called back on the first series, and since then, Prairie Ridge definitely spying on him, putting one man responsible for Blakely everywhere he goes. A lot of speed on the perimeter. They like to get him between the tackles as well. 
Nazareth loves the inside zone. Blocking where Blakely gets a chance to read things. I said today they'll get him as many touches as he can handle. They rested him a little bit in the middle of the season, so he'd be fresh at the end of November. And he is. Pass out on the perimeter. Evans made a man miss and picks up the first down into the red zone for the Roadrunners. Good feet. Able to keep his balance, get a playmaker speed in space, get him the ball early, chance to read blocks. Anytime you get the ball out on the perimeter to a guy that averages 16 and a half, you're doing some good things because you throw balls out on the edge. You take defenders out of the box. You loosen up the running game. He went to the right wristband, then had to go to the left wristband for this play, and it's going to be a running play, and heading for Tater is Blakely. Touchdown, Roadrunners. 16 yards and an extra point away from tying this game. See the celebration in the end zone. Blakely got there before it didn't count. This one's going to stay on the board. Little inside jet again. A little bit of read. Nice block at the point of attack. A couple of wolves chasing, but all for not too much speed by Blakely. Bobby Grimes, the quarterback, is also the place kicker. Punter Daniel Wilkinson is the holder. Grimes 44 for 52 on extra points this year. He's in seven of nine extra points. This one will come right at you. And he drilled it. And he hit the scoreboard. <laughs> Little extra emphasis on the extra point from Grimes. And we're tied at seven. We'll take another look at the game tying score from Blakely. Inside handoff, great block by his guard, the pull from the opposite side. He read that block, knew it was coming. Right there, blocking the point of attack. And then it's just too much speed. That was Lewis Steck that threw that block. And there's Gavin Smith, the center, picking him up in the end zone, Smith. One of their captains, the captain's chair, as uh, Coach Racky told us, the outgoing seniors vote on which incoming senior uh, will be the captain's chair. He was unanimously selected last year, three-year starter, uh, high academic, and he wants to go into uh, military academies, looking at the Army, looking at the Air Force. Uh, would rather be in a service academy than to uh, play at the collegiate level. His brother uh, got an appointment to the Air Force, and he's looking to follow uh, in his brother's footsteps as well. That's 74, Gavin Smith. And there's Devin Blakely getting worked on in the sidelines, and that's something to keep an eye on. A little bit of hammy stretch there. Average of 10 yards a pop and a touchdown thus far. One more thing with Smith. He was here in 2015 when they, yep. when they won things, so... He wasn't going to let a 7-0 deficit get him down. Trainers working. Cool day. We'll take it for November, though. Seven-play drive with just over three minutes after the short kickoff to get it even. And here's a pooch kickoff. Fair catch caught four. Called four, I should say. And they will get it started right there. So that's honestly... That's the Evans effect yeah. right there on special teams. Yeah, so instead, of, kick, instead of kicking deep, they had that play they put in last time. They just pop it short, let them fair catch it, and start at the 34. Which would be good field position to start any drive. The Evans effect. I think there's probably some of that every game when a defense schemes for him and this offense. I, I alluded to it earlier, but I will again. With only a few teams running this kind of offense, you don't practice it all year. And only have a week to do it. This is like a Georgia Tech Army Navy kind of offense. It's option football, all based on reading the defense and then reacting and decision making. First and ten at their own 34 for the Wolves in a tie game. Evans is going to keep it left side. Gets to the corner and brought down just across the 40. You know, it's funny, Mark, when you go look at articles uh, about teams as you get ready for quarterfinal, semifinal, championship game weekend. Every article I read on the Wolves of Prairie Ridge all season, the comments from opposing coaches and the amount of respect that they all have for Samson Evans, even though he had just beaten them, sometimes by 40 or 50 points, you could just hear the amazement in, in, in all of those quotes that you read or, or see on the video recap from all the opposing coaches of teams that the Wolves beat all season. Sum it up, Tim Reckie said, he's incredible. 
Falling across the 40, getting to about the 42 up the middle is Willis. And you know, Coach Shrimp say no doubt he's the best player ever from their area in the 21 years that he's been there. So they open the quarterfinal game with a six minute drive for a touchdown. The semifinal game with a six minute drive for a touchdown. They didn't score a first drive today. <laughs> they had to wait for the drive second drive. But <laughs> drive number two, they did. Third and two. They were stopped on third down on drive one. Kirchberg started to go in motion. And here's Evans, right side. Falling forward across the 45 will pick up the first down and that'll bring the first quarter to a close as well as they stop the clock to mark it for the first down. And once they get the clock rolling again, the Wolves are not even going to try to snap the ball again. They're all walking towards the sideline to foot field and get ready for the second quarter. 7-7 seven, seven after one in the 6A title game between Nazareth Academy and Prairie Ridge. Thanksgiving weekend to celebrate with football in the schools both brought very good crowds. We see the Wolves crowd from Crystal Lake. They're celebrating in the maroon. Guy had his pads out. He wanted to go in. <laughs> ready to go. They're on the press box side of the field here and across the way the Roadrunners from Nazareth Academy. From the Grange Park and they've got a nice contingent as well. So filling in nicely which will continue to do throughout the day like Zurich and Batavia next in 7 8. Loyola Academy, Lincoln Way East will cap off the weekend in the 8A state championship game tonight. Both can be seen on NBC Sports Chicago Plus. And here's Samson Evans getting across midfield. Prairie Ridge in that first quarter, 76 yards of offense, all rushing a 5.9 yards per play. Both teams were one for one in the red zone. Five penalties on Nazareth Academy stopped one drive for them and extended a drive for the Wolves and Samson Evans eight rushes 39 yards already 274 in the state title game last year he'll keep it drives the right side flag is down behind him he'll get across the 30 but that flag thrown by the referee right at midfield is going to be a hold against the Wolves that's the thing when you run the ball 50 plus times a game going to get a couple holes first penalty on the Wolves. There is no doubt that the precision boots where they run their offense. Holding number 75 on the offense 10 yard penalty second down. They scheme and scheme and practice and rep and rep because Samson Evans not only makes good decisions but he is so silky smooth with his decision making. Evans has an upper 75 comes into your screen with a hole right there gets his hands outside takes the defensive end to the turf. Sophomore Riley Smith that backs him up to the 40. Well, Branson went in motion, kind of a miscommunication there, which you don't see often from the Wolves. He went in motion, then he stopped, and I think Evans expected him to continue on behind him. He turned the hand the ball, and there was nobody there. Samson Evans has an opportunity on every play. You'll see him at times look at his wrist. That's the play coming in from the sideline. And then once that play comes in, Tim Recky pretty juiced right now, trying to exalt his team. <laughs> Third and so 14. There's Evans looking at the sideline. And then he has a chance on every play to, when the play comes in, to choose between two or three on his wrist with that timeout wolves they want to see a play third and 14 in their playbook and what they can come up with we're tied at the count seven seven in the six eight title game seven seven ball game in the six eight title game jackson willis for prairie ridge got it started with a 10 yard touchdown run on the Wolves' second possession of the game, then having a touchdown called back on a clipping penalty. 
And it was Devin Blakely getting a 16-yard score instead of a 74-yard score from the drive before. That got us even. Both extra points were good, 7-7. Seven, seven. And now the Wolves of Prairie Ridge, who have won 27 games in a row, face a third and 14 on their own 40. Explosive at any time. They can take a running play, turn it into first and 10 on any third and 14 or any third and 24. Put it in the air. A screen pass is swatted down. First pass attempt of the game. And it was knocked down by Eduardo Gonzalez, the 6'1 senior. And he has been the heart of the team. He's had a monster of a year. Or on pull from Tim Racky there. He smelled that one out. That was uh, no doubt a film room knockdown pass breakup right there. They know tendencies. They know the screen pass from film sessions, and he knocked that one down like he knew it was coming. Justin Miko Wycheski, the punter, hits it towards the sideline. That's going to bounce and hop out of bounds. Right around the 35-yard line. That's when Naz will get their first drive of the second quarter underway as they go into the wind here in quarter number two. They're going to try to go ahead and reestablish 45, Marcus Griffin, and three, Devin Blakey, against this win. Yes, they'll mix in some pass, but the run game is what they want to establish as this game goes along. Lions rolls to his right. Now takes a step back. He's going to put it in the air, and he threw a bullet for a completed pass to Diamond Evans. But he, he calm, cool, collected, and complete with that pass because he just bided time, bided his time. And you mentioned he stepped right back. He let the guy, he let the play develop. Watch a step back right there. Allow the route to run in provision, and then a bullet as he used his vision downfield to find his fine receiver, Diamond Evans, a 5'10", 180 junior. His third catch of the game already for Evans, and this play goes for minimal gain. Grimes is a fantastic baseball player, very athletic. He's undecided for the next level of baseball, but he just showed off his fastball on that play, rolled out to the right, and he said, hey, Diamond, catch this. <laughs> just yes. fired it right at him. Strong arm and ability to move to move the pocket on the rollout and yet set his feet and just throw a bullet tight spiral. Didn't get enough for the first down there through Blakely, so they'll move the chains. Everybody looking at their wristband. What play's coming in from the sideline? Two wide receivers out to the left side. And the handoff goes to the right to Blakely. He's bounced backwards and somehow still fights his way for a minimal gain. It looked like he was going to lose five yards on that play. Drew Norton drove him backwards, the 5'10 senior. But somehow, Blakely kept his feet under him and fought back to the line of scrimmage. Holding contain on the edge, holding the edge. Good job by the Prairie Ridge defense to not let Blakely get outside. Second and nine. Two wide receivers this time go to the right. One in the slot to the left. Pass is short. One hop. The intended target Evans, and now it'll be third and long for the Roadrunners. Senior defensive end, 54 for Prairie Ridge. He'll always go to the boundary side. That's where he's going to try to rush the passer from. See him right there. A lot of decals on his helmet. He's made some plays. <laughs> 0 for 1 on third down so far in this game. They punted after that first drive penalty. A little confusion in the defensive backfield for the Wolves. And we've got a flag. Ball start. 72 on the offense. Five yards, third down. Penalty number six against the Roadrunners so far today. There were two defensive backs on the left side guarding one player, one wide receiver, and they were both motioning for the other one to go away. <laughs> 
for Prairie Ridge, and uh, they might have dodged a bullet there because that limit somebody was uncovered, but Naz could not get the play off in time. So situational substitution for Prairie Ridge right now. Sprinting in is Drew Fryer, so they bring an extra backer into coverage here. Expecting this third down pass. Looks like Prairie Ridge is only going to rush three. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Grimes under pressure, and he will just throw it away. He was getting harassed by Jacob Omen, who has 110 tackles, 10 sacks, 15 tackles for losses for the 6'1", senior number 25. But Omen's the one that put that pressure on it. They they showed three down linemen. Omen came as the fourth guy off the blitz. And when you can rush four, put that kind of pressure, that allows seven back in coverage. So Grimes could not find the time to find an open man or anybody in any open seam downfield. See how they do with the punt here. Punting into the wind to keep it away from Evans, and it's nearly blocked. It still goes to Evans. Right around the 20, cuts back up the middle, makes a man miss. Samson Evans, Superman off to the races down the sideline. Touchdown, Wolves. No flags. Cue up the highlight tape right there. No doubt about it. He's a special player. You call him Superman at about the 40. And about 65 yards later. 78 yards on the touchdown. And Diamond Evans is down injured and looks like he's in some pain. Let's see Evans on the touchdown. Great cutback made two people miss some good downfield blocking. And then it was all over. But he caught that ball moving forward. He already had momentum into that catch. Look at him turn around, make sure there's no flag on the field and then the congratulations from his teammates career touchdown number 119 he had a couple as a receiver his freshman year he has 109 on the ground and now seven is a returner be a punt returner kick returner and i'm in evans still down near the 30 it looked like he ran into a couple of his own teammates and he is helped up and being helped off the field right now and putting some weight. He's been a focal point of their offense. Let's see, number 17, right there, gets rolled over by 88. Jack Glore rolled over his ankle and lower leg. His own teammate just total in, inadvertently. Yeah, they were both trying to tackle Samson Evans. So were the other nine Roadrunner players, but to no avail. High school, college football for you covering so many games. How many times have you seen the quarterback go back as a punt returner? Never. <laughs> Samson Evans, he scored, as you mentioned, passing, rushing, receiving, receiving returning. returning. Coach Shrimp said, people think I'm insane because I put my quarterback back there to return. He Why said, not? I just want the ball in his hands. Look at what he does. And I said to him, he said he's done so much to surprise us. I said, what's he going to do to surprise us on Saturday? He said, I don't know. We'll find out together. Well, there's number one. 78-yard punt return for a touchdown. You always, when you see players that make superlative plays like he does, you think, okay, everyone's got their own MVP. Well, this guy is special among the special. We saw it last year. We see it this year at, at the biggest stage, the state finals. Four touchdowns last year in the state finals. 274 yards rushing. He's got 45 yards on a kick return today, 78 yards and a touchdown on a punt return. And a 14-7 lead for the Wolves of Prairie Ridge, who have won 27 in a row. Good picture of his coach, Chris Shrimp. He wants a front row seat to watch his defense here, special teams play here. 2015, they lost in the semis. Here's Coach Shrimp's record, 133 and 50. 14 winning seasons, 13 playoff appearances, trying to get to 30 and 10 for a playoff record. The IHSA Coach of the Year this year, played at Westchester St. Joe's, played at St. Xavier, coached and taught at Proviso West. Then on to Prairie Ridge in 1997 as the offensive coordinator, now the head coach. On the return for the Roadrunners and getting tripped up just across the 
20 yard line is Devin Blake. Leo get to about the 25. Nazareth, the team filled with a bunch of juniors. They had nine sophomores up on the varsity last year. So they knew they'd have a good year. They know they'll have a great year next already. But quite honestly, probably a year ahead of schedule. Yeah, getting here to the state finals. And, and when you looked at their path, too, of, of what they had to go through to get to this, you know, when you got Sacred Heart Griffin in the quarterfinals on the road, you got Providence Catholic in the semifinals on the road, and yeah, all juniors, you know, all those talent spots for Nazareth. Roadrunners back on the field, they have seven first downs on the game, but unfortunately, six penalties. And nothing on first down for Korea. Blakely's a junior, Love's a junior, Evans is a junior, Oglesby's a junior. And there's your top two running backs, top two wide receivers. Then Dylan Smith with 380 yards rushing as a junior. Marcus Griffin's a sophomore. We've seen him get some carries so far today. Everybody talks about the importance of third down conversions. Coordinators on both sides talk about first down. If you can. Make an offense be second and third and long. You can really tee them off on defense. You make them one-dimensional that way. Rolling out is Grimes. Puts it in the air. He's got a completion and enough for the first down. Grimes goes the second time with a naked boot off play action. So they like that play. They're going to go back to it until it's stopped. Good sleight of hand here. You'll see the inside fake. The naked boot off the jet and all by himself. And a nice delivery for 13 yards to his back out of the backfield. Marcus Griffin, the fullback, he had a carry in the first quarter. Now is the completion. We've got a player down the right side. Well behind the play at the 45-yard line. Prairie Ridge with a 14-7 lead. It's Devin Blakely down hurt for Nats. Saturday on NBC Sports Chicago, the Blackhawks continue their Florida swing with a contest against the Florida Panthers. The coverage starts at 5.30 with Blackhawks pregame live or stream live on the NBC Sports app. Come Blackhawks fans in the crown, got the stocking cap going. And that was Devin Blake. We saw him after the touchdown run, Mark. He was getting worked on the sideline. Looked like he was getting his hamstring stretched out at that point. But they were also working on his neck. And now it's his left hip uh, where he's pointing. And they're working out on the sidelines. And tough for the Roadrunners to lose Devin Blakely. Yeah, their most dynamic player as far as ability to create something on his own. Handoff. Go for a couple of yards to Dylan Smith, the 5'9 junior. Came into the game averaging four and a half yards per carry on the season, 381 yards and three touchdowns. See if they get Michael Love more involved with Blakely out as well. And they like to line him up in a bunch of different spots. The slot is a wide receiver and also in the backfield for Love. One of those guys, anyway, you can get a playmaker touches on the football. You have to be creative offensively to get the ball in his hands. He's even thrown a 66-yard touchdown pass this year to David Ogilvie. Here on the right side, Marcus Griffin gets across the 40. We go a little outside zone that time. They stretch it, try to get to the perimeter. Good seal blocking the four. Finally, a very solid tackle by Michael Wycheski. How about that? Miko. Miko. <laughs> so I'm over two. Close. <laughs> to his family, apologies, but I'm going to get it. Third and three. Grimes under center. Turn around, handed off to Griffin, fighting for the 45 and did not get to the 45. Sam Concialdi, six foot, 165 senior was in on that tackle along with Justin Miko Wycheski. So decision making time here. Fourth and short. Oh, we haven't even want to punish the Evans again. No. <laughs> Fourth and two. Play clocks 10 seconds. See Coach Racky, he wants a timeout and he'll get it. He was standing right next to the linesman. He was just waiting and did not like what he saw, so he was just waiting to call timeout. 
Timeout called by the Roadrunners as they're down seven with fourth and two. The Illinois Treasury. Do you have unclaimed property? Check today at IllinoisTreasurer.gov. The Illinois Treasurer's Office safeguards unclaimed property, such as life insurance proceeds, missing paychecks, and forgotten bank deposits. There is $2 billion in unclaimed property. Check if your name is among the thousands who have unclaimed property at IllinoisTreasurer.gov. That's www.IllinoisTreasurer.gov. You had spoken earlier about the respect these two teams have for each other. Coaches, Coach Shrimp said Nazareth has unbelievable speed it's how it's incredible how fast they are all over the field how well they run to the football defensively solid skill guys on offense and big kids up front that's why nazareth is in a position to play for state totally coming in 12 and one here today with a huge decision here on fourth down maybe, maybe rugby kick this fourth and two that's exactly what they're going to do Sure, Evans wasn't back there to get his hands on it, and they'll punt it inside the 30. It's a real smart coaching decision there by Tim Racky and his staff. They showed offense, showed offense, and then used the punt to change and flip field position. Yeah, when you asked him about kicking him, Tim, he just said, We won't, right? <laughs> that was, that was he his said, answer. We won't. They did we won't. once. And he, yep. Yeah, he probably bit his tongue on that one. Dynamic player. First and 10 for the Wolves, 5.41 to go in the first half of play. Ball at the 27-yard line, and Evans hands it off this time. It's Willis up the middle to about the 30. He scored the first touchdown, Jackson Willis. He's only 5'7", but 175, so he'll take some hits. But he's got such a low pad level, he can kind of sneak through an offensive uh, an offensive line underneath this offensive line as well, getting at the second level, and he can move some linebackers back a yard or two. He and Kirschberg are the juniors. We're gonna whistle here. Equipment change, I think the officials. Found an equipment issue, so a substitution. Sending Marcus Griffin to the sideline. 5-9 sophomore is featured offensively so far out of the backfield for the Roadrunners. Carter Evans, Samson's younger brother, the freshman, split out wide to the left. That's what Samson did when he was a freshman. That's right. He was a split in. Their brother Shane was on the team, and here is the pitch to Gold Branson. He'll pick up just a couple. And Shane was first. He was a lineman. Started here at Northern and then went to Purdue, where he is now as a transfer. Now, Sampson is the quarterback, one year as the wideout, three as a quarterback, 38 and two as a starter. He'll go on to Iowa next year with Jeff Jenkins. Imagine the Hawkeyes are going to use him all over the place. We just saw him returning the kick. See, he does that next year in the Big Ten and just lines a, up out wide. And just a football player. That's right. It's everywhere. They're 0 for 3 on third down. This is third and five. Running it up the middle. No, he kept it on the side. It's Evans turns the corner, and he'll get the first down. Well, you told me I get faked out a couple times. There's one. Yeah, there's no <laughs> doubt. He faked out. The, the whole defense collapsed as well. They, they missed outside contain here. I see the crash down. And that's a broken responsibility because somebody, again, we can't tell you who because they switch between linebacker, corner, defensive end, but on every play, somebody's got quarterback, somebody's got fullback, somebody's got pitch men. Jermaine Baker forced him out of bounds, but the first down had already been gained. So at the 40 yard line now, Evans keeps it this time to the right side. He'll turn it back upfield and pick up four. And that's exactly what they want to do. Coach Shrimp said, hey, for us, a four-yard run is a great play. Yeah, Jenkins, once again, the block of the point of attack. You talk about a tackler, get out and block like that, 10 or 15 yards on the edge to pull out and use that kind of speed. It's just amazing. Tim Recky said, if we sit in one scheme on defense, they'll find a weak spot. So we have to have at least three schemes to try to confuse the Prairie Ridge offense. This time it's a straight handoff up near the 50. 
for Willis. And you look at how the defense of Nazareth has been playing. Danville, a high-powered offense out of the Big 12 Conference. They held them to 18 points. Sacred Heart Griffin, we know they put up 40 to 50 routinely. They held them to 17. And then Providence Catholic, they did give up uh, 100 yards, but gave up just seven points. They gave up 100 yards rushing. But just the seven points allowed. And here is the run across the 50. That'll be enough for the first down. So a third down conversion there. Just grinding it out right now, being able to move the sticks with explosive plays, but also with a little bit of fullback ride. Gave up just seven in each of the last two regular season games. After that aberration on their schedule, they're 12 and one, and the one was a 42 to nothing loss to Marist. Usually, you don't see a team that's 12 and one having a 42 point loss no. as their one loss. So if we're back in our defense, Mary Evans had a broken play and is lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. He dropped back, and there was nobody there. Nazar making situational substitutions. Or just getting fresh people on the field because every situation you're playing run against this offense anyway. Evans looking for the play and now heads back to the huddle. So he has two or three on that wrist that he can choose from depending on what he sees from the defense. That's what he's changing right there. Keep it up the middle to the 46. He ran into Gold Branson there. Well, that's just how to keep it. That's just how long he was reading that play. Wait, 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 wait. See where the defense collapses. Then you pull it out the last second. That is not easy to do. Not just mentally, but physically to be able to have that symmetry between the quarterback and the, the running back. Inside 90 seconds to play in the First half, third and six. They've converted on this drive twice. Ninth play of the drive, and they're still at the 45. And this is one of those drives where they've gone about four yards of play. Here is Willis still fighting forward. Got to the 40, but that's not going to be enough for a first down. And we go under a minute left. In the great, first time. Great balance for fine before Wesley Lones finally gets him down. Fine tackler in his own right, but good balance and strength to stay on his feet. I'm a great linebacker, a class six A all stater, 102 tackles, 14 tackles for a loss for number 27, a 6'2, 205 pound senior. You know he wants to get a win today because when they played the state title game in 2015, he was hurt. He couldn't play in the state title game. Mistad had two sacks last week in the semifinal game. When he gets downhill, he will stick you. And a call timeout here with 20 seconds left. Nazareth is out of timeout, so Prairie Ridge was able to run the clock down and take a timeout. Clutch management by the Wolves. And Nazareth's timeouts were used with some confusion with their offense early on. 20 seconds to go in this first half a 14 7 lead and Nazareth Academy won the coin toss they deferred so they will get the ball to start the second half so a big spot for them if they can get a stop here over the next 20 seconds Prairie Ridge averaging five uh, they have 572 points that's 44 a game so to have them only at 14 and a half should they be able to escape uh, this drive, Nazareth, you got to feel pretty good about the way your defense has responded. And if you take out their two games this year against Kerry Grove, the numbers are insane. They yeah. beat Kerry Grove 7 to 6 in week one, and they beat them in the second round of the playoffs 17 13 when Samson Evans scored from 66 yards out on facing a, a third down yeah. play or fourth down play facing elimination with 20 seconds to go. You take out those two, and it's been 40, 55, 63 every week. And they are going to. Part away on fourth and two here with 20 seconds left. He runs off to the right and boots it towards the corner. And that ball will trickle into the end zone for a touchback. 12 seconds left. The Nazareth Academy has no timeouts and they're throwing into the wind. So that was just a simple, let's kick this ball down there and 
get to halftime. Well, you have two choices right now. Take a knee and just get to halftime and adjust your one handoff. Because you will not see anything. He just put them under any kind of risk here to give the football up. Well, Coach Reiki just pointed to his knee. So yeah. I have a feeling that that's exactly what they're going to do is Marcus Griffin's over there having a laugh with his coach. Yeah, he yelled over and pointed at his knee, and that's exactly what they'll do to take this contest to halftime at 14-7 for the Wolves of Prairie Ridge. Offenses have both scored once, but Samson Evans made the difference on the punt return from 78 yards away. It gives the Wolves of Prairie Ridge, who have won 27 games in a row, a 14-7 lead here at halftime. And I think both defenses are pretty happy the way that, that those first halves went. And just one play on special teams being the difference thus far. And when you get to two championship kind of teams like this, the third phase becomes ever so more important. And that extra weapon, number 22, Samson Evans, is the difference in this game thus far. So Samson Evans getting the punt return for the touchdown. Devin Blakely scored for Nazareth. And Jackson Willis had the first touchdown for Prairie Red. Sierra has got Coach Shrimp down on the field. Sierra, take it away. Coach, earlier this week, you said that people thought you were crazy for having Samson no. Evans return punts. Right. You don't look so crazy no, right no. now. I look smart today, don't I? Yeah. How important is it to get the ball in his hands? Well, we, you can see, uh, you know, anytime he has it in his hands, he's a threat to score. And he's perfect for our offense and perfect to run punt returns and kick returns for us. He always, you know, he always seems to make the big play when we need it and he's done it twice today one of your keys was maintaining possession and moving the change how in your opinion how well do you think your team has done in executing the game plan well i think we got we need to do a little bit better job i think our up front uh we need to fire off the ball a little bit harder a little bit lower uh keep our you know our football is really you know six minute drives and uh, we need to put a couple of those together in the second half here and that leads me to my next question. What's it going to take to pull away and, and take home that second championship? Yeah, well, we got, we got to make Nazareth, uh, you know, go the length of the field, no big plays, and then we got to hold on to the football. All right, thanks so much, okay, Coach. Coming around the corner after the break, we've got highlights at halftime along with some analysis. <laughs> Halftime here at our 6A title game where Prairie Ridge currently has a 14-7 advantage over Nazareth and Edgy. The pace of that game, what were your initial thoughts? Well, if you're an exciting football fan and want to see action end to end, that wasn't your no. first half. <laughs> but if you're a Prairie Ridge fan, you are exactly thrilled with the pace. You know, that is the pace of play that is an option team you prefer. You want long time of possession. You want to be able to just kind of grind things out and control the ball. And and a, a big play offense like Naz, you limit their touches, you limit their big play ability. And that's what Coach Shrimp said earlier this week, that really they needed to maintain possession of the ball, yeah. and they've done exactly that. They have a one-touchdown score at this point. Now, as for Prairie Ridge, or sorry, as for Nazareth, rather, uh, what is it going to take for them to kind of pick up the speed? We know they're known for their speed. Uh, to get in it and get into kind of an, a rhythm. Well, you mentioned rhythm, and I think it's really important. I, I think you almost need to do everything you can to force that tempo to really be able to kick things into gear. And you hate to say the word wake up because I don't know if that's the exact term, but to really get things rolling uh, for sure as far as a pace of play because right now it's totally in favor of Prairie Ridge. And taking a look at some of the stats, I don't know that we can see them right we now. We cannot right now, but I, I, I'm pretty certain Prairie Ridge is overwhelmingly winning time of possession in the first half. Exactly, and then going to look at some of the scores, you know, that Devin Blakely 74-yard touchdown, it would be touchdown run. Yep. That didn't happen because of, penalt of the and, blocking penalty. And Sierra, it's something we didn't talk about in the pregame, but penalties and penalty yards has been an issue for Naz all season long. They are highly penalized week in and week out. Something second half you absolutely have to avoid. Again, that affects pace of play as well. You get a big play from a kid like Blakely, it just, it, it kind of takes the air out of what you've got going momentum-wise. 
And that punt return was probably the most exciting play yeah. we've seen on well, the first half. And Crouch well, takes a lot of he takes a lot of flack for letting Samson Evans return punts. Well, but not, yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's when you win a state title, you you see things. And you know, we call him Superman, and you hate trying to put that kind of pressure on a high school athlete. But he's so good in those situations and makes such big plays. Now you kind of have a little bit better of an idea why we call him Superman. So, Prairie Ridge, if they do win, we'll get your thoughts on this as we come back. We want to know, are they the best team in the state? We've got more coming up after the break. We are just a few minutes away from the second half of our 6A title game where Prairie Ridge currently holds a 14-7 lead. And you just saw there the Nazareth fans still in this. They're not giving up any any uh, doubt. Plenty of rhythm sure. in the stand yeah. for there, that's for sure. And one of the things I wanted to ask you, Edgy, is if Prairie Ridge does come away with the win, are they the best team in the state? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice, easy one to throw yeah, at me. Gee, know, thanks a lot. I'd like to get easy. through eight games first and then figure out those pressing <laughs> questions. It's a great question. Uh, I've had Prairie Ridge ranked number two, I think, since week one. And I've had Lincoln Way East ranked number one for quite a while. Um, I'm going to see how the 8 8 go game goes and then I'll look at it. But it, it's really hard to ignore what Prairie Ridge has been able to do the last two years now. And if they pull this off with a win, they have a great case to be number one overall team in the state of Illinois, no doubt. The only team vying for back-to-back -back titles, so you got to think that uh, okay, they're building I, their legacy. I know where your vote is. Thank you for sharing that with me. <laughs> All right, here's our first half stats. Let's go ahead and take a look. And just as we thought, you know, the time of possession isn't as lopsided as I thought it oh, would yeah, be. It's it not. felt like Prairie Ridge had a lot at the ball a lot more often than just 13 minutes but you also take a look at the rushing yards uh, the passing yards for Prairie Ridge that doesn't surprise you does it no it no it doesn't at all and and you know again it, it's a good day in Prairie Ridge when you never throw a pass so it, and that doesn't surprise me when that option's working it's working you keep sticking with it and and again a balanced offensively for Naz and you know, I, I think if you go into the locker room, if you're Naz, we talk pace of play. You've got to pick things up. You've got to limit the penalties. You've got to clean things up. You need a big play. You need an explosion play early on here to really get your side and your kids back into this game. So the message to Nazareth then is limit the penalties, clean it up a little bit. But you also said that Prairie Ridge did a great job of kind of keeping them off their game. They did. And you've got to make a tweak and adjustment here and there and, and try to find something magical to get going. Now, Devin Blakely. We don't know the yeah. extent of his injury late in the second quarter, so that can have an impact as well. Okay, and now if you're Prairie Ridge, you just coach uh, Chris Shrimp, what do you do? Well, I keep doing what I'm doing. And, and it sounds simple, but, you know, the ball is in Superman's hands. It's the second half. You're a championship team. I'm going to finish out the way I started this thing. Samson Evans is going to lead me to wherever we're going to go. And he said, that what we got to do is get the ball in Superman's hands. So there you have it. I think you guys are both on the same page. When we come back, we will hear from Nazareth's coach. We'll be back in just a few minutes. leads Nazareth Academy here at halftime. A 27-game win streak on the line for the Wolves in the second half, while Nazareth Academy looking to get their third title in the last four seasons. And they've done it in 6A and 5A. Trying to do it again here in 6A as the Roadrunners will get the ball to start the second half. And Mark, we heard from uh, Edgy Tim and uh, Sierra, their thoughts of the second half. And actually, let's check in now with Sierra. She has coach Tim Recky alongside. Sierra, take it away. First off, uh, how's Devin Blakely doing, and can we see him in the second half? Yeah, he's going to try to go. He got a little dinger on his hip, but he's going to try to uh, see how it goes this first series. So he seems okay. I hope he is. You guys kind of got off to a rough start, but how'd you rebound so quickly? 
you know, I, it, a lot of performance anxiety, which is expected in a state title game. And I think once they settle down, especially the defense, defense has been playing real well. Uh, we, we played much better. I get the Coach of the Year award, of course, for kicking to uh, Samson. <laughs> so, uh, but other than that, it's a great team. So defensively, we're playing well. Offensively, we just got to move the ball 10 yards at a time. Those first downs. How are you going to clean up the penalties? No, that's, you know what, that's been an Achilles heel all year for us. We, we discussed it again and, you know, fingers crossed that we're going to take care of it this half. I have a feeling you mentioned a thing or two about it, no? Yeah, oh yeah, a thing or two, yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you, Coach. We'll send it back up to you guys in the booth. Thank you, Sierra and uh, Coach Racky and Coach of the Year, right, Mark? <laughs> well, he he lied to himself, said I'm not going to kick it to him, wanted to change it, flip the field a bit. And Evans caught that punt in stride. Picked up a couple of nice blocks, and Samson Evans had 123 return yards, yeah. 56 yards rushing, so 179 yards in the half. That's how dangerous he is every time he touches a football. Hey, what well, though? If the Roadrunner players are as loose as their head coach is for a second half of a state championship game, then I, I think they're ready to go for the well, second half, don't well, you? Well, you know, and he he was joking with his players on the sideline yep. at the end of the half, trailing that. You know, you're, as a coach, your team follows you. And if he got up tight, if he tried to, you know, have them be on the defensive because of penalties, because of a mistake here or there, his team would not perform. He has them. You could just see the rapport relationship he has with them, and players will feed off of that. Six-time state champion, Coach Racky. You mentioned earlier, eight between these two head coaches, and they've got a second half to decide this one. I was about to ask you before we went down to Sierra, what do you expect to change from the first half as we get ready for half number two? I don't think there'll be any changes. I mean, there's some adjustments. I think Nazareth has to be pretty happy the way they've kept Prairie Ridge's offense off, off the scoreboard. Just one, one touchdown of the offensive end. Nazareth has to have Blakely healthy, quite honestly. They have to have him healthy. He's got to get some chunk plays for them to move the sticks to the 15 and 20 yard variety. And I think they got to continue to throw the football. They've done a pretty good job throwing the football. I've been very impressed with uh, Bobby Grimes and his ability. They'll go back to that naked boot a couple times. It's been effective for them and run that until they stop it. They will have the wind at their back here in the third quarter. And in the first quarter, that's when we saw Grimes kind of start to sling it around as well, especially finding Diamond Evans. The injuries will be one thing to keep an eye on. Devin Blakely and Diamond Evans at both times in that first half had to be helped off the field. Two of the big playmakers for the Roadrunners. We'll see what their availability is for the second half. And that second half is underway. Reach puts the kick on the ground. Another short kick off by Prairie Ridge, and it will be at the 31 yard line for Nazareth to get this third quarter underway. First drive, oh, so important here for Nazareth. You had just mentioned about the win, but if they can sustain anything, flip this field, and put any kind of points up on the board, they'll regroup a little bit of more momentum. See that? The yeah, their, their drives have just, they got to eat more clock. Than they have there and they have to be able to convert on third down we'll talk about that the next time a situation comes up their inefficiency in that area grimes is six for nine for 71 yards that first drive was a touchdown drive briefly and here's a screen pass on the left side but then it was called back because of the block in the back that took a long touchdown run off the board we see diamond evans he's healthy so that's good news number one his fourth catch They want to get Evans touches. They want to get Love involved. You want to make offensively all five guys that are eligible to touch the ball. You want to make them all threats by spreading the wealth around. He's now at 48 yards. Blakely was 64 yards rushing in that first half. And here's the pass completed. Looking for the big play. And they get into Prairie Ridge territory down at the 45. And that is Michael Love. His second reception of the day, his first one in the first half, went for 11. Skinny post on time on target, just a tight spiral there on play action. Inside positioning, moving the sticks before a nice individual stop. 18, 18 yards on that reception for Love, his second catch of the game. Now they put it on the ground and they run on the left side. Goes for nothing. Nico Wycheski was in on the tackle of Alex Carrillo. Coach 
Iraqi, so the Devin Blake that is going to give it a go. We've not seen him yet here in this third quarter of play. Carrillo's in the backfield with Grimes. Love and Evans are both out on the left side. He's looking over the middle, and that's incomplete. It was intended for Evans. They come out throwing the football. What that's uh, out of five plays the second half. They've thrown four times already trying to establish that play action up first down. The best time to throw a football. And then second down, now third and long. This is where they run out of trouble. On third and nine, they lost a yard. On third and nine, they had a false start. And it went incomplete on third and 14. On third and three, they had a one-yard run. So they have not been able to convert in these situations. This is third and nine, long. 0 for 3 on third down as Mark mentioned, and this is picked off. Interception by the Prairie Ridge Wool, Sam Concioli, with the first turnover of the game. Concioli with a great break on this football. Grimes had been throwing the ball pretty effectively. Concioli just sitting back, just jumped the route for a solid, solid pickup. See the little cushion at the bottom of your screen. And the lock in, Concioli jumps the route. He gave him about three or four yards, adjusted, and made a really good Oski pick right there, cutting right in front of Diamond Evans. Fans are fired up for the wall. Samson Evans and his crew take over at the 40, their own 40. He fakes the handoff and keeps it to pick up a couple. So anytime you ride your fullback like that, you're making the decision whether to hand it or keep it. But when you make that decision, you keep it, you basically have an extra blocker in front of you. So you get you get the man out in front of you, Jackson Willis, to become another body at the point of attack. They ran the ball 24 times in that first half for 116. They tried one pass. It was incomplete. That's one more than they wanted to. <laughs> That's right. That was on a third and long play, and it was knocked down. Count the white shirts in the box. There's eight between the tackles right now. Evans will keep it, closing in on midfield, and they'll have third and short. Nazareth, very well-schooled, well-coached, wholly contained defensive quarter. Jeff Tumpain really mixing things up. They have not, Prairie Ridge has not been able to get much on the exterior. Everything's been on the inside. Evans with 62 rushes. He's always one break away from going from 62 to, you know, 120, what have you. And average giving up 135 on the ground this year. Has Nashville Academy, although, as you mentioned, they haven't played a team like this that runs it on every down, and that'll always throw your averages askew. Here on the third down with their third and six, and they'll pick this one up. He faked the hand off to Willis and kept it himself across the 45 to the 43 for the first down. Well, this is exactly what the Wolves want to do. They want to churn some clock, stay in front of the sticks. They want those five and six minute drives. Yes, they'll take an explosive fullback ride right there. Samson Evans does it himself. Follow Timothy McGuire as well. Now he'll pitch it. Go Branson, right side. He gets across the 40, tripped up near the 35. He had just one man to beat, and he was going to have the sideline to the end zone. So Go Branson picks up eight on first down. He's got speed to the edge. Had a touchdown last week at the semifinal game. He can get to the house on any particular play as well. Go Branson, one of those five seniors that have been up since they were freshmen. Evans, Jenkins, who we've talked about quite a bit. Perhaps and Omen, the others with Gold Branson. They've been playing together since fifth grade. And here is Gold Branson on the right side. He'll pick up the first down, lower the shoulder, and got across the 30 for first down yardage. Coach Shrimp said he's been watching them since the fifth grade because Shane Evans kept saying, hey, coach, you got to come watch my brother. You got to come watch my brother and all these guys. Look at what they do. They run the same system. And so he's been watching them since they were in fifth grade. Yeah, he's watched them grow up. He said he's going to be more sad to see them leave as people than football players. But I think it might be a tie. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to miss them as football <laughs> players as well. Look at this stoic look for a guy that's coached an awful lot of football. Go Branson can flat out run the ball. What a hit he put on the corner as he initiated the contact rather than taking a hit. Six carries for 43 yards. It's Willis up the middle. And he 
picks up a couple. And you mentioned earlier, he's only 5'7", 175, but he lowered his shoulder there as well and created some extra space and picked up three yards on first down. Alex Carrillo was in on the tackle, number five. Coach Trump, I think he wants his offensive line to start to impose its will up front. They got to get off the football. Look for Jenkins to be a big part of that. When he pulls and gets out in front, it is a fun thing to watch. 77 really special at the tackle position for them. Ben Schultz, the center, number 72, 6'6", 300 pounds. Evans keeps. And he is short of the first down by a couple of yards. So they're trying to parlay points from the turnover. And this is a Brian grind them out drive. This is the third, third down in this series. They've been quite clearly successful on the first two. Four for seven on the day. And Evans now over 2,000 yards on the season for the second year in a row. With over 2,000 rushing yards. And he's in some elite company career-wise in the state of Illinois in rushing yards, and he'll get across the 20, pick up another first down. How about just his ability to push the pile right there? Because he was stopped at about the 20, and then just his lower leg drive and his will to move the chains. They are in the red zone. Looking to add to their lead, one for one. In the red zone today is Jackson Willis capped off that first quarter drive with a 10 yard run. Here's the pitch. Go Branson left side. And he's brought down just shy of the 15. Nice block by Kurtzberg for his teammate on the edge. Jermaine Baker and Alex Carrillo were in on that tackle. Baker's got great ball skills back there. And the junior is getting some Division I recruiting looks as well. 65 tackles, three interceptions on the season coming into this one. And Coach Racky saying that he's big time in the run-stopping game despite being a D-back, and that's what they were going to count on from him today. This is play number 10 of this drive. Started on their own 40. Evans keeps it around the right side. Ran over one and then spun to pick up a couple more. How about Jenkins getting over there to pick up his buddy right there? And Evans was on the ground and Jenkins ran over there from the tackle position, picked him up. They'll probably be out for pizza together tonight. Good picture of Jenkins. Third and four. Six, they look to convert again, five six, for eight. Six, four, 270. He'll tip 300 when he plays at the next level. Kirchberg went in motion and stopped. Now he changed the play. Nazar shows blitz. Evans keeps it and he'll get brought down shy of the 10. Diamond Evans was in on that tackle. First game situation right here for the Nazareth defense. They get a stop there and force a would be field goal. Up. Set it up. This drive's been over six minutes. They set up the field goal here. Kyle Kolblinger, four for five on field goals this year, although he did miss the Hoffman Estate semifinal game. And two is along. This one is up, and it is a no good. So the Nazareth defense gets the stop they needed after the turnover. They forced a field goal attempt, get the job done. It remains a one possession game. Nazareth with a chance to move the football. The Roadrunner fans celebrating across the field after getting a stop, a missed field goal. From Prairie Ridge, a 12-play drive took six minutes and 26 seconds off the clock from their own 40 down to the Nazareth 12, but they could not convert and could not get points on that drive. 
That's not going to stop the Wolves fans from dancing. I love dancing in the stands. You got those moves, don't you, Mark? Yeah, I did probably about 59 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> First and 10 at the 20. Wind at the back of Bobby Grimes through an interception to end the last drive. Puts it in the air and incomplete. On the first play of this drive, that is Devin Blakely, the intended target. So he's back on the field, did not play the last drive. So it's good to see Blakely back out there and a weapon the Roadrunners need to have in this second half. Roadrunners have put up 55 and 54 points the first two playoff games. Then a tough game against Sacred Heart Griffin. Why not 2017? Everything else has been easy. Nice cutback on this run. Evans making people miss, and then he dives forward to make sure he had the first down. He zigzagged around. I don't think he knew he already had the first down, but he dove for the 35 anyway. Picks up 14 on that carry. Little jet sweep inside, handoff. They pull the tackle from the far side. Then he does a. The rest on his own, a nice kick out block on the corner. Fall forward, know where the sticks are at. Eclipse that, and Nazareth has moved the, the ball on their first, on a, on a first down. He made Drew Fryer miss. Two wide receivers on each side here for the Roadrunners. Grimes looking to put it in the air. Does so, that is complete. Across the 45, another first down, and it's Diamond Evans again. Well run route and on time once again. Just a seed right here delivered by Bobby Grimes. Plenty of time to throw tight spiral inside position. Tackle by Sam Concialdi. He's been on Evans. Five catches for Diamond Evans. Concialdi had the interception. The last possession. Here's a screen pass on the left side and breaking free. This is Evans again. He's got daylight down to the 10 and inside the five yard line for Diamond Evans. And we've got a flag at the 27. Might be another block in the back to bring this back. We saw that on the first drive and Evans is slow to get up holding his left hip. Gavin Smith carrying him to the bench. Another explosive play. Roadrunners runners walking backwards. Evans getting the ball out in space. Had two blockers in front of him at the catch. We have a block in the back, number 55 on the offense, 10 yard penalty, first down. We heard Coach Racky tell Sierra at halftime penalties have been their Achilles heel all season. We get the ball in space here to Evans. And there's Michael Rotolo, gave the shove to Jacob Oman. He could see his numbers and pushed him right in the back. When you when you want to block downfield, you want to block toward the goal line, not against it. That's exactly what happened there, and he was caught. So instead of being on the four, the ball is on the 37. Pass is complete. Right sideline from Michael Love. He's inside the 30. So distributing the ball, kind of spreading around the wealth a little bit. They go to Love there after going to Evans earlier. Hard to guard. You distribute the ball to different playmakers. Using the whole field, they went to the boundary right there. They've thrown the ball to the field side. They're really now spreading the Prairie Ridge defense out. They're working on Evans on the sideline. Grimes is four for five on this drive. Puts it in the air again. He's got a man down the middle. That is complete. Fryer was there on the tackle, but that pass is complete to Brevin Reifsteck, filling in for the injured Diamond Evans. And Brevin Reifsteck gets the first down. They get a seam route here, post right in front of the safety. Over the corner release, safety comes up and makes the, makes the stop. Times five for six on the drive, inside the 20. Grimes looking to his left, backs up, getting chased, and brought down a big loss. Jacob Oman was there. Michael Pillify was also chasing him down, and he's going to lose 16 on that play. Jacob Oman calls the defense for them. He just continues to stay with this play, extending it his Grimes. But using his speed, Oman just relentless in his pursuit of the quarterback. He's a film room junkie who 
his coach thinks he's one of the most cerebral football players he's coached. Yeah, you start as a middle linebacker as a freshman on a program like Prairie Ridge, you're pretty good. And that's what Omen has done. Second and 26, and this pass is complete. Over the middle, touchdown, Nazareth. And it's Michael Love. 30-yard touchdown strike, no flags this time. Michael Love, Michael Love wide open in the middle of this defense. There has to be some kind of breakdown at the back end of Prairie Ridge defense because look at how alone he is. Once he caught the ball, he knew he was going to go to the house. Sixth touchdown of the season for Michael Love. Averages 15 yards per catch. He also has three touchdowns on the ground, and he's thrown a touchdown pass, so do a little bit of everything. His brother Julian, a star at Notre Dame. And the extra point for the tie is good. Bobby Grimes, Hunter, Hunter a pistol on that drive. Boy, did he deliver and distribute the football in his fans from National Academy Roadrunners on their feet. Loving it. It goes back to the defensive drive, then the offensive opportunity. The only mistake on that drive by Grimes was getting sacked here, but it didn't matter. He stood in there on the next play and delivered a strike to Michael Love right over the middle. We're tied. 107 to go in the third. The 2017 IHSA Football State Finals are brought to you by Country Financial. Take simple steps today at countryfinancial.com slash simple steps. 14 all, Prairie Ridge and Nazareth Academy is that young man, Michael Love, got the reception from Bobby Grimes, capping off an eight play, 80 yard drive that took 243 off the clock. Prairie Ridge missed a field goal that could have put them on top by 10. Instead, we've got ourselves a tie game after an eight play, 80 yard drive, and Bobby Grimes five for six on that drive. He found three different receivers. Diamond Evans, then he left injured after a penalty flag, brought his play back from the four to the 37, uh, pass to Brevin Reifstek, and then the touchdown pass to Michael Love, which was his second reception on that drive as well. Grimes got the work done. We've got ourselves a tie game, 14 all, and then Grimes has got to kick it away because he does double duty as the kicker for the Roadrunners as well. Spreading out the wealth, getting the ball to different playmakers' hands, being hard to guard defensively because you don't know where the football is going to. And is this one going to Samson Evans? Oh, it's going to go over Samson Evans and into the end zone. And we are tied with 107 to go. Stay tuned after this game for our country financial game break as a part of our IHSA Greatest Championship Game Series. You'll see highlights from the 2009 7A game, Glenbard West and Wheaton, Warrenville South. That'll lead us into the 7A state title game, which will be on NBC Sports Chicago Plus. Lake Zurich and Batavia. Speaking of Wheaton, Warrenville South, they are the last 6A team to repeat as champions back when I was in high school, 1995, 1996, dating myself there a little bit, Mark. And, uh, Prairie Ridge You're has a, a youngster. Chance, yeah, I'm a youngster, that's right. <laughs> Prairie Ridge has a chance to be the repeat champions in 6A, which has not been done in 21 years. Well, Chris Shrimp says, tells his team a championship team always beats a team of champions. Great quote and theme to go by. And the reason I bring that up at this point, this is a championship moment for both teams. Nazareth got that stop, forced the field goal attempt, got the miss, went right downfield. Now it's Prairie Ridge opportunity to answer. Second and seven, Evans keeps. Brings it left side, first down and more down the sideline and forced out of bounds right around the 40 and a flag late as he's driven to the ground. Alex Carrillo. Samson Evans just waits for this play to develop before he's pushed out of bounds late. Jeff Jenkins out in front of him. Personal the foul, late hit out of bounds, number five on the defense. Add 15 to it, first down. And his baby brother, Carter Evans, threw a good block as well. Evans waited for that. Let's take a look. Eighth penalty of the day on the Roadrunners. Two have brought back big plays, including one that brought back a touchdown. And now this is going to add 15. He's out of bounds there, and he was the second player to hit him. Josh Oglesby had forced him out of bounds, and then Carrillo was the second one over. 
Jenkins was out in front of him, his brother out in front of him, and then 15 on, and they're answering the bell with a good first down drive. Pitch to go Branson, and he breaks the right side, gets to the 40, and a big gain on first down of eight. Second and two, an offensive coordinator's dream. Most of the Prairie Ridge offense is option, but they do have some set plays, you know, the fake handoff and then the reverse pivot, the cross buck, what have you. One quarter to go in the 6A state championship game. Nazareth scored last. They got this game tied 14 all, but the Wolves are moving as they get it down to the 40. 14 all after three. The 6A state title game. Fourteen all as we start the fourth quarter. If you're just joining us, well, we wonder where you've been, but here's what you've missed to get us to fourteen all after three quarters. Career high in the semifinals, scored four touchdowns. Here's Willis up the middle, and he will score the game's first touchdown. To the right wristband, then had to go to the left wristband for this play, and it's going to be a running play, and heading for Tater is Blakely. Touchdown, Roadrunners. Into the wind to keep it away from Evans, and it's nearly blocked it still goes to evans right around the 20 cuts back up the middle makes a man miss samson evans superman off of the races down the sideline touchdown rolls for three on third down as mark mentioned and this is picked off interception by the very ridge wall sam concioli Two of the long. This one is up and it is a no good. Second and 26, and this pass is complete over the middle. Touchdown, Nazareth. And it's Michael Love. 14 all. Michael Love got the game tied on their last possession. Both teams have 14 points. Both teams have 14 first downs. And Prairie Ridge has the ball on the 40, and Evans follows his fullback and will pick up a first down on the first play of the fourth quarter. And both teams in a position they want to be in. You want to go into any fourth quarter with a chance to win a game. In this case, it happens to be a state championship game. So we could go down to the wire here in what's been an outstanding and well-played 6A game, albeit a few too many penalties if you're a Nazareth Roadrunner fan. Prairie Ridge has only scored under 42 points three times this year, 30 against Jacobs, and the two games against Kerry Grove, 7-17, seven and 17, a broken play here, and Evans barely able to get back across the 35, so they're in rare territory, only having 14 points through three quarters. They had just 10 through three quarters in round two, and they scored late to beat Kerry Grove. Good responsibility football by Riley Theobald there, stayed right home as Evans and the flow went to the far side of the field. Thibault stayed home, Evans came right to him. Good solid tackle, hold of the edge, and with his defensive positioning, responsibility fulfilled. That's what Coach Racky preached all week. Take care of your job, and then go get the ball carrier. That's called what it, they did. Called it no hero ball. Be where you're supposed to be. Here's second and 12, Evans gets brought down shy of the 30, and that puts the Wolves in third and long. And Eduardo Gonzalez was there on the tackle. Teams came together, their team came together, Nazareth Academy to honor Eduardo. His mom, Sylvia, has been battling cancer since the summer. Kids went out on their own, got bracelets with her name put on them. And Coach Racky said it makes the entire team better when Sylvia shows up to a game, makes them all feel better. When they see her smile. When they see her smile, it makes them feel better. When they see her fight, it helps them to understand their fight. Evans, right side, heading down the sideline, directing traffic, diving for the first down. Did he get it? It looks very close to where that spot was. The Roadrunner players were signaling no, that he was short. The Wolves players were signaling that he had it, and I think we're going to have a measurement all the way across the field. At about the 23-yard line. Football's right on the 23. He was directing traffic <laughs> behind two players and then just dove for the sideline. Gonzalez thinks they got the stop there. 
A little bit of heavy breathing by Samson Evans. He's been a busy man. Well, it'll be fourth and short if he did not get it. And he missed a field goal into the win, last possession. We're going to get a great view of this one. That's mighty short. That's short. There you go. That's how far they need to go. Wesley Lones was in on that. So a chance to discuss the situation right there with a clock stop as the chains move back. 25 rushes, 117 yards for Samson Evans. Mentioned he's gone over 2,000 yards again this season. He's over 6,300 career yards. Seventh in the IHSA's career rushing yards list. In a quarterback counter that basically turned around last year's championship games, right? And here he is, a fourth and one. First fourth down conversion for either team. Attempt for either team. And there's nine defenders in the box for the Roadrunners. So they try to. Use voice to draw him offside first. Fourth and one, the pitch. Go Branson, working, fighting, got it. Zach Go Branson, also a senior. Nice block out front, leading the way. Good stock block by Kirchberg. But Grapethen with a crunching block downfield as well. You see Jenkins there. He took Jermaine Baker out of the play. And then Gold Branson comes flying through for the first down. And the doorstep for the red zone. Their new set of downs. Here's Evans. Keeps. And a big hit behind the play is going to draw a flag. Right in the middle of that scrum. Personal foul. Number 45 on the defense, 15 yard penalty. Half the distance to the goal will be first down. Another big penalty against the Roadrunners. And that is a storyline in this game. It's hurt their offense. Stopping a couple drives, putting them in third and long positions. It's hurt their defense. Ninth penalty. Coach Racky talking to Marcus Griffin on the sideline now. That play was done. It was a minimal gain. And then. He came flying at the end, way behind the play. So first in goal inside the 10 for the Wolves. Evans keeps fighting forward. Just shy of the five. Take a look at that first down play on the penalty. And you'll see Evans get tackled here just shy of the 15. And then watch behind the play. Boom. 32 drew it. Zach Goldbranson and Marcus Griffin sent him a couple of yards back. Griffin tried to plead his case, but pitcher tells a thousand words right there. 27 rushes for Evans, 124 yards. He will keep it. And still going, second effort into the end zone. Touchdown, Samson Evans. Touchdown, Prairie Ridge. He scored on a punt return. Now he scored on the ground. A rushing touchdown number 110. How did he career. get into the end zone there? It appears he stood up for a game, but not a touchdown game. He just keeps churning. Look at the balance, lower body strength. And you talk about a guy who knows where that goal line's at. He certainly does as he elongated the ball, broke the plane, and puts his team back on top. Six guys touched him on that play, and he drove two of them into the end zone with him. The extra point is up, and that's going to fall just short of the scoreboard, but it's good. 21-14 for Prairie Ridge as they regain the lead on the legs of Samson Evans. Samson Evans' second touchdown of the day. His first on offense puts Prairie Ridge on top 21-14. 11 plays, 80 yards, took 431 off the clock, capped by a five-yard touchdown run. And here's our rushing numbers. Evans, 28 carries, 129 yards. 
Zach O'Branson, nine carries for 49. Jackson Willis, nine carries for 41. Willis and Evans both have touchdowns in total. 219 yards, averaging 4.8 a carry. That 4.8 is the key there as they continue to grind and churn. We have not seen the big explosive play from either Evans or Gobranson. We thought Evans' longest runs 15 yards, yet they've been able to stay in front of the chains, move the football, grind the clock, and now find themselves 836 away from a title for the second consecutive year. Coach Shrimp considers a good play four yards, then keep going and going and going. And that's exactly what they have done almost now at 5,000 yards rushing on the season as a team. And they're ready to kick it away with 836 to go. And we'll see if the Roadrunners have an answer. And then running game just continues to grind against a defense and punish you and wear you out and wear you down both physically and mentally it can do that to you kick goes down the middle of the field making the run down the right side lots of space and then caught from behind the 35 yard line Michael Love last time he touched the ball he scored a game tying touchdown and Tried to do so there, but got caught and pinned in on the sideline. Drew Friars looking for a new helmet. He picked it up. That one broke. He wants to get back out there on defense, but that helmet broke on him, so he's going to have to get that fixed. He ran right by the heater over on the far sideline as well. Thirty-five yard line, first and ten for the Roadrunners. Curry Red answered with. A great drive to retake the lead after Nazareth had answered them. Let's keep it on the ground on the first play and go nowhere on the right side. That's Blakely. Hold of the edge, keep it contained on Blakely. We've seen a couple explosive plays from the Roadrunners, but they've had blocks in the back on both of them. One would, would have been a touchdown on their first drive, and then the second one, they ended up scoring anyway. It was brought back from the four to the 37, but Grimes found love. A couple plays later to get it even. They're looking for a penalty free drive here for the answer. Grimes in the air. Complete to Evans. And he will be brought down about the 43 yard line. He's been their go to receiver today. Good timing pattern just to curl in route. Planted his feet, curled back, football right on time. And he stopped the route short right in front of the corner. Phil Koenig involved in that play. Blakely goes to the bench. Third and one. Did not get to the 45. Marked down just shy of the 44. Keeper. There's a first down. Drew Norton was in on the tackle. Prairie Ridge showed blitz. Nazareth ran right at it and then threw it to move the chains. Pressure coming from the outside. Cuts it back inside. Good run, squaring the shoulders, taking the hit of the point of attack. First and ten. Grimes rolls right and short hops his intended receiver. There's Michael Love. Try to get that ball in front of Perhats. Grimes 14 of 21, 195 on the day. Second and 10. Two wide receivers on each side for the Roadrunners. Smith goes in motion. The pass is out to him in the flat. Across the 50, but not much more than that as he rolls out of bounds. Dylan Smith tackled by Perhats, and it will be third down. Third down has been an issue for Nazareth this afternoon. That and penalties have been their two bugaboos. One for five on third down. This is third and four. Much more manageable. They've been third and eight, third and nine a few times. This is a much more manageable situation for Grimes. 
They need to get just across the Prairie Ridge 43 for the first down. Fakes the handoff, throws over the middle. He's got a man, that's complete at the 30. Cutting it back inside and gang tackle just across the 25. Michael Love. Michael Love has been the go-to guy. It was Evans for a quarter and a half, and now the last two drives has been Michael Love. Michael Love, that's going to be his fifth catch right there coming into your screen. And once again, Bobby Grimes off play action, his boot movement, he is much more comfortable throwing the ball with that kind of movement squaring his shoulders than just staying in the pocket. First and 10 on the 24, handoff this time, breaking free on the left side and getting across the 15 is Dylan Smith, the 5'9", 175-pound junior. Smith running with authority. Inside handoff, a little zone read. Picks up a couple nice blocks, waits for those blocks to develop. Heads north to south, cut back. He's running hard right now. Nine yards on first down. Take it every time before the solo tackle coming to your screen. Bye. Me Wycheski. <laughs> Nico Wycheski. <Me. laughs> I'm 0 for 3. Pass for Grimes. Puts it in the air and tipped away. Oh, flag thrown in. Concialdi, who had the interception in the third quarter, arguing that he tipped that away cleanly. But the flag is down the five yard line. Pass interference, number 11 on the defense. Half to miss the ball. First down. Second penalty on Prairie Ridge today, and this could be a costly one. Let's take a look at it, Mark, as they move the ball to the seven. Yeah, if there's any kind of contact when the ball's there. Ah, he thought he made a pretty good break on the football. See it from a different angle, maybe. You see. Looks pretty clean. Unless he got his right hand on the back of the receiver. First and goal at the seven for the Roadrunners. Grimes sprints out to the right towards the sideline and just throws it away. He was being chased out of bounds by Joshua Crandall and had nowhere to go. Smart play as he cleared the tackle box. In order not to have a grounding call, you have to do two things there. You have to clear the tackle box, but the ball has to go past the line of scrimmage. Cerebral play, he did both to negate any kind of possible loss deep in the red zone now. Loves in the slot to the right. Evans split out to the left. Grimes is going to run it. Gets across the five, still fighting for the end zone. Did he get in? He did! Bobby Grimes with his Samson Evans impersonation just kept the legs driving and gets into the end zone. Well, they go quarterback draw power because there's an extra running back in there. You took guys out of the box with two by two on the outside as he lets his play develop. There's the draw play. And I watch the presence of mind to stick the football out at the goal line to break the plane. He used his teammates too. He was laying on top of two blockers. Look at him right on top of Diamond Evans and lunging for the end zone. He just doubled his season output and rushing touchdowns. Really liked that play selection because they went two by two receivers had Prairie Ridge completely spread out. That opened up the inside run, the extra man, the quarterback run. Yeah. Into the win for the tie. Bobby Grimes with the extra point. Three for three in the red zone are the Roadrunners and 5.03 to go, and we're all tied at 21. So now we're playing catch up with each other. I'll take your punch, you take my punch, as both teams have answered each other. Grimes finishes this drive off with this quarterback draw. And he keeps those legs moving, 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 then knows where the goal line's at. Extra points good and ties this thing up. We have a classic brewing here, Husky Stadium DeKalb. Exactly what we anticipated. We entered the fourth quarter, think we got a fourth quarter game, a four quarter game, and with 5.03 to go, this gets to the time where who's gonna make the big play, whether it's offense, defense, 
who's going to be the player of the game down the stretch. Senior captain Gavin Smith made sure he got that ball across the end line too. He was there ready to pounce on it in case, in case it came loose as he was reaching for the end zone, but he followed Matt Keeler and Gavin Smith on that one. Night play, 65 yards, 332. Off the clock and a seven yard run by Bobby Grimes. He had a passing touchdown to tie the game at 14. He gets a rushing touchdown to tie the game at 21. Grimes 16 for 24, 224 yards passing the football. So the aerial attack has been in full, at full throttle for that young man who's thrown the ball. You got it. Oh, Evans has seven catches. Love has five catches. And then one, two, three, four, five other. Roadrunners have caught a pass. They've really spread around the wealth in their passing game. The Wolves move players around on this kick return, and it finds Evans at the 25. He's going to the outside to the 40. He'll get across midfield, still going across the 40. How about that? They put him in as an up man that time, and they kicked it right to him. Oh, my goodness. He kind of snuck his position. No deep man. They were they line driver squibbed it, staying away from him. He wasn't there. It's been great all day long in the return game. Quarterback, and we take a look at him here. Running early, running with power. Here's the return that put the Wolves out in front 14-7. Then he got the touchdown for the 21-14 lead as well. 38 yards on the kickoff return. The last minute, him and Jackson Willis switch spots. And it's like there's a magnet and the ball just found him. He'll, he'll run it down to the 30. Such a will to win by a champion kind of player. Many people think he is the most elite player in the entire state of Illinois. There's very few arguments against that. He's going to be a worn out young man by tonight. 28 carries, a buck 29, a punt return touchdown, two kickoff returns for return yardage, giving his team enviable field position and a will to win with leadership qualities. He will keep it here. Riding Jackson Willis, and he kept it. He's going to be close to first down yardage, and he's got first down yardage. Well, they got in their mind right now is churn and burn. Churn yardage, burn clock at the same time. And it's always a dream of the drive. Would this be the drive for Prairie Ridge with 413 on our stop clock? He's got two more touchdowns today, giving him 120 for his career. Just third all time in IHSA history, both as a rushing touchdown and total touchdowns. He's third on both of those lists. So they're taking right now, taking their time because they have possession. And they're taking away any would be clock from the Roadrunners at the same time. Hirschberg went in motion, and I think they had too many guys in motion. Actually, there's two different flags. Yep, it's against five yards. Repeat first down. Against the Wolves. No Canadian First Football start. League rules there. No. <laughs> it stops the clock on them, too. And now they'll get it going again. Chris Shrimp has both of his daughters on the sideline, Kylie and Maggie. I'm sure they're much more nervous than Dad, who's pretty stoic right now, involved in the football game. Team managers, and the senior and the junior. Maybe. On his side the entire time, the sideline. Here's the pitch for Go Branson across the 25 and out of bounds just shy of the 20. Now that was triple option football personified. That's like the old day wishbone of the present day Army Navy. Fake the fullback ride, fake the, the run, then the pitch as you read the corner. There's the fake. 14 yards. Once he saw. Jermaine Baker crashed down on him. He made the pitch, picked up a block downfield from Evans, Carter Evans. We've got an, we got an injury, or he's they just waved over to the sideline and called a player over. Oh, there we are. It's the injuries all the way over on the Prairie Ridge sideline. 
I didn't see anybody down on the field, but they were calling over the trainers. It's Joshua Oglesby, I believe. It is number one, the 5'10 senior. Yeah, the referee was signaling to the trainer and the coach to come over, and there was nobody on the field, but he was down all the way on the sideline in front of the stands after that tackle where Bill Branson went out of bounds. Second and two, just inside the 20. Branson went in motion, Evans will keep it, and he'll fight forward. Close to first down yardage. Evans has surpassed 30 carries now on the day. Talk about a workmanlike afternoon. At 34 last week for 327 against Hoffman Estates and four touchdowns. They're going to do a measurement here to see whether it's a first down for the Wolves or whether they have third and short. 278, four touchdowns accounted for last year's title game. Two touchdowns accounted for thus far today. Three oh one on the clock in the measurement here. And they are short and football hidden by the official there. And now you can see or his left hand is holding the chain, how short they are. And it'll be third and short. Later today on NBC Sports Chicago, the IHSA State Finals continue. A 7 a matchup between Batavia and Lake Zurich. Coverage starts at 4 o'clock on NBC Sports Chicago. Stream live on NBC Sports app. Hopefully that one with Dave Bernhard, Hub Archer, will be just as good as this one has been for us. Well, Dave had a good one to call last night. The 4A final went to the last second field goal. And we're going to the last minutes here. Pushing forward for the first down here. So what they did is they just bought a fresh set of downs. Yeah. And unless they get the ball in the end zone, they just bought two more minutes of, you know, churn and burn, as I call it, moving the sticks. And they theoretically could burn this last 252 off and run the last player two of the game with a clock running. Yeah, Lee and Jack had the two-way game with a touchdown with 108 to go, winning it for GCMS. And Dave and Chris Highland last night had the walk-off field goal by Rochester. And we're down in the last 230 with the tie game here in 6A. Evans will keep. He follows. Well, actually gave that one to Willis, put it right in his belly. So Willis across the 15 on first down. Nazareth now being much more aggressive with their linebackers, bringing linebackers on inside blitzes. They're going to use their first of three timeouts as well in an effort to get the ball back. 2.15 on the clock as they call timeout. Smart clock managed by Tim Racky. One, setting his defense, trying to get this stop, trying to force a field goal. Two, buying his team some time and let and instead of allowing Prairie Ridge just run out the clock and the football at the same time. The Wolves and the Roadrunners tied at 21. Prairie Ridge has won 27 in a row. Let's take a look at this, Mark. The last 10 years, on Boylan Catholic, on the Rockford, and Sacred Heart Griffin out of Springfield both had 39-game win streaks. Loyola Academy will play in the 8A game later this evening, won 30 in a row. From November 14 till the 2016 state title game in Maine South back in 08 to 10, won 20 in a row. That's what Prairie Ridge is trying to match. Although you look at the bottom, how about that all-time record? 66 to 1973 for Pittsfield, seven straight years. They won 64 games in a row. That's covering a seven straight undefeated <laughs> season. But the last 10 years, Prairie Ridge, 27 in a row, trying to get to 28. You look at that 39 from Boylan Catholic and those great uh, Ken Leonard teams out of Sacred Heart Griffin. Common thread, not just great teams, great programs. Yep. Second and six, Evans. This time he does keep across the 10 and falling forward. Let's see if Nazareth is going to call another timeout here. They just used their first. And Coach Recky did not move off the sideline that time, so it looks like they will 
let it go. He started to move over. Couldn't tell if he was trying to get the official's attention to call another timeout or not, but just had the right hand up. So well, he's in a rock and a hard place. Yeah. He calls another timeout. They get, shoot. They get uh, two more yards. They burn it anyway because they they get a fresh set of downs. They're two out of three in the red zone. They missed the field goal when it was 14 to seven. Third and two here. Evans keeps it up the middle. He's across the five. Another first down. And we're under 90 seconds to play. This drive started with a short field because Evans had the great kickoff return as they moved him from the back into the middle of the kickoff return team. Clock's going to run. They won't snap this for about 20 seconds. Carter Evans just came in. Sampson looks at the wristband. And take this down to about 102 before they snap it here on first and goal. Both teams, fans on their feet. Evans up the middle, touchdown! He finds the end zone again with 101 to play. His third total touchdown today is second on the ground. He had the big punt return as well. That's his seventh touchdown in a state title game over the last 12 months. Three yard run. He just rides the fullback, makes the decision last second, squares his shoulders, lunges forward. Championship type of drive by Purridge as we see it once again. There's the fullback ride. He waits for the line to collapse on the fullback. Then he gets in the end zone and then he receives a well deserved hug by his buddy Jenkins, who's always the first to greet him in the end zone. Our win trust play of the game, Samson Evans, third touchdown of the game. The extra point is good. The lead is 28-21 for the Wolves. That drive started with 454 on the clock. They went 353. They converted a couple of third downs, and then they let Superman run it in for the touchdown. He has put them on top three different times today. Let's see if that'll be the game winner, or do the Roadrunners have an answer? They right. have three times today. Why not smile? I think he deserves a pretty good smile right there. And I tell you what, this game has been so awesome the last quarter and a half because it's score, I'll match you. Score, I'll match you. Both teams, incredible resolve, incredible character, an incredible ability to sustain the mental part of the game and stay with their game plan. But what a great drive that was. You know, the drive, that was it for Prairie Ridge right there. 101 to go. They've got two timeouts to work with. They will be going into the wind. And there's Samson Evans' numbers on the day. 35 carries, 155 yards, three total touchdowns with the punt return touchdown, which came the first time he scored. His last two have been on the ground from five and three yards out. Jackson Willis scored the first touchdown from 10 yards out. So those 155 yard rushes, rushing, he's got to have close to 200 yards return. So he's, 300, he's 316 total. Yeah. So you got total all purpose yards at 316. 83 kick return, the 78 on the punt return. Do the math. You got to get the calculator out when you're dealing with number 22. We, don't need, we don't need the calculator. We, we got, got Nick. We, Nick we did got it the for best us. in the business right, <laughs> right there. Nick's got it covered. 316. We don't have to do that quick math. Kickoff with the wind at the back will boom into the end zone. And the Roadrunners will start at their own 20 with 61 seconds to go. They got to go 80 yards. They have two timeouts to work with. Of course, the clock stops on first downs. And we will see what Bobby Grimes has for an answer. He answered at 14 all. He answered at 21 all. One with the arm, one with the legs. It's been Diamond Evans, Michael Love, that have been the beneficiaries of a very efficient passing game by Bobby Grimes. And we've got a flag before this drive even starts. An infraction on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat one. Now they got to go 85 yards. And that's been a problem. All game long. And that juiced up Prairie Ridge Wolf fans even more. Tim Racky looks on. He will lament the Ten. penalty flag today when things are all said and done. Ten penalties. One took a 74-yard touchdown off the board. They did not score on that drive, which was their first drive of the game. They also had two penalties that extended 
Prairie Ridge drives today. Five defensive backs in right now for Prairie Ridge playing very soft. Rhymes over the middle. That is caught out near the 30. Right at the first down marker on the reception for Cole Verselli, his first reception of the day, and it is a first down. Evans has caught seven. Love has caught five. Grimes, a senior, he's a winner. He will continue to push his team downfield. Looking to put it over the middle again. He does. It's complete across midfield and out of bounds near the 40, and that's Michael Love. Clock stops at 43 seconds. Michael Love with a deep route across the middle, a crossing pattern. Plenty of time to survey the defense and hitting him in stride. Once again, Grimes playing incredibly well. 31 yards as he ran away from Perhats and Fryer. They're on the 40. Grimes under pressure. Jenkins chasing him. He's got a man at the boundary and completes it to Diamond Evans to the 34 for six. Great improvision by Grimes, three in a row. Adjusting his route was Evans, knew where the stick was at. Came up just a little bit short, but got his foot down to get out of bounds, more importantly than the stick. Grimes had barely caught that snap, and Jenkins was a yard away from him running through the line. 38 Wolves. seconds left. Wolves rushing only three. They're showing a the linebacker blitz. Here he comes. Grimes. Complete across the 30. That is Blakely at the 27 and a first down. Clock stops at 32. Take the running back, put him into a receiving situation. More targets to survey for Grimes. He continues to distribute the ball. First and 10. Clock going now. Grimes looking over the middle. Let's it go over the middle, and it's incomplete. Looking for a flag, won't get one. He thought he was held in the end zone. It was for Love, who thought he had a little bit of pull on his shirt. Miko Wycheski was in coverage. 19 seconds left. They had Blakely out in the flat on a wheel route. They could have checked down to that, but he decided to go for broke. Throw that one into the end zone. Probably three plays left. Completed his first four on that drive before the incompletion. 19 seconds left. Second and 10. Hits a receiver in the flat. That's Blakely. Makes a man miss. Gets across the 20. But we stacked up there and brought down at the 19. Clock inside 10 seconds and a timeout called with 10 seconds to go. And it'll be third and short. So they went to the route that we saw the previous play. They checked off on that as well. They pick up some yardage. We had anticipated three plays. I still anticipate time for two. This one doesn't have to go to the end zone. Obviously, the last one would. They've got one timeout left. Though if they pick up the first down on third and two, that would stop the clock as well. That's so important. Get up there and spike it. Yeah, so because you can use the middle of the field with that one timeout left rather than the boundary being a defender for you and you have to go to, to the boundary. Makes it much more easy for the defense. Look at Coach Racky in title games. And four at Addison Driscoll, Mount Carmel in 3A and 4A. One of those in double overtime and the other a running clock game over Prairie Central and Bureau Valley. And then with Nazareth, beat Lamont in 6A three years ago, beat Lincoln Way West in 5A two years ago, 42 to 21. And now in 6A again, he's won titles in 3A, 4A, 5A, and 6A. So well poised. He can get it done, huh? That's pretty amazing. Probably doesn't want to find a way to 7A, but he could add another class to that. Here we've got third and two. 25 home and see if he blitzes here. Grimes, right side, pass complete and out of bounds. First down, seven seconds left. Gets to the 13, finding Diamond Evans, and still probably two plays. Yeah, that one only took three seconds. I anticipate every play being four or five. Nine catches for Diamond Evans on the day. He's been a favorite target. Boy, how poised have they been in this drive? Fantastic. No, they have not flinched at all. Just very systemic. Three to the left, two to the right. Five receiver formation for Grimes. He takes the snap. Looks to the left side, that is picked off! Interception, Drew Norton, he slides down and this one's over! 
Last night there was a walk-off field goal in the 4A title game. Today we get a walk-off interception. That's back-to-back -back state titles and 28 wins in a row for the Wolves of Prairie Ridge. Oh my, Marker does a classic. What a great football game. Prairie Ridge scores late Samson Evans. And then Bobby Grimes drives his team right downfield. But you look at the state champions made the it's always one play, and that one was made by the state champions. They begin to ce celebrate. Grimes completed seven passes on that drive. He had the one incompletion, then the interception. Prairie Ridge wins it. That is seven interceptions on the year for the senior Drew Norton. That's how you cap a high school career. Drew Norton with the interception, his seven. And the Wolves of Prairie Ridge. Drew Norton win it all. And I'll tell you what, it takes a big man to pick up Jeff Jenkins right there. Wow. Drew Norton never made a bigger play in his life as he's just playing center field, guarding the goal line. Goes up, catches his highest point now. What a nice slide. He'll remember that for eternity. It took off just enough seconds as well. They were looking for Michael Love in the end zone and never got to him as Norton picks it off. Evans had three touchdowns. They got interceptions from Con Cialdi and from Drew Norton. And then you see Coach Shrimp and his assistant celebrating. Two quality programs, two quality leaders of those programs, and two championship teams shaking hands right now because both played like champions today. Ton of respect between the two coaches, Coach Racky and Coach Shrimp, and from their teams as those two embrace near midfield. And Sierra Santos has a winning coach, back to back champions, and a three time champion. Coach Shrimp, Sierra, take it away. Apologize for the technical difficulties. We'll get back to Coach Shrimp with Sierra as well as the team shake hands. The Wolves continuing to celebrate. And Sierra, take it away again. And half by our team just showed how we played all year, playing for each other. And uh, kids came up, made big plays when they needed to. And that was that interception was just phenomenal. Just a mental grind on the ground. And what, what does that say about your team's discipline and their patience? Yeah, well, that's how we play. That's our that's our discipline style of football. And uh, you saw it both offensively and defensively. That's, uh, you know, a lot of great athletes over there uh, playing for Nazareth. And for us, us to keep those guys to, what, 21 points? That's That was quite a feat. All right, we talked earlier in the week. First rule about the win streak, don't talk about the win streak. You are at 28. Win streak's pretty cool now. You are at 28 <laughs> consecutive games. Yeah. Have you ever been a part of something like this in your Never. career? Never. I don't think I won 28 games in my high school and college career. I'm not kidding. So uh, 28 in a row, it, it's just unbelievable. But for a group like this to do that, it, I, they deserve it because they work so hard. It's not too often that you get back-to-back -back state titles in the 6A class. What does this mean to Prairie Ridge? Oh, it's it's huge. It's huge for our kids and in, in our community and for everybody to see, you know, what we we can accomplish with the kids that we have, and uh, it's just it's just phenomenal. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you very I much. think your daughters are waiting to go yeah. celebrate. All right, Samson, we'll get you over here. All right, Samson, what's it feel like to cap off your high school career with back-to-back -back championships? It's definitely a great feeling. Us as seniors, we knew we could do it. We just had to put in the time and effort, and we, we have been doing that since we were eight years old playing with each other, and we've been playing with each other for like 12 years now, so it's just a great feeling. We all wanted this, and it's a very emotional experience. All the individual statistics aside, your coach says you are a once-in-a-lifetime player that you can make any play and that the guys will go out there and make any play for you. What's it like to hear that about yourself? It, it means a lot coming from my coach. He's an inspiration to me and all of them are. Uh, it just means a lot that he has the confidence in me like that. How cool is this win streak? It's amazing. I, it's got to keep it going next year. It's a great feeling, though, 28 no. All right. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Sanson. And we'll send it back up to the guys up in the booth. Thank you, Sierra. Thanks to Coach as well. And to Samson Evans, who is our country financial player of the game. All of these classmates making sure they get that on Snapchat and uh, get it 
on all their social medias as well. Let's take a look at Samson Evans Day. 78 yard punt return. Gave them the lead in the first half. And then he went to work on the ground. You see a five yard touchdown run here for the 21 14 lead. Nazareth answered. He got a big kick return and then put it on the ground, running into the end zone to make it 28 21. They ran 56 plays. He ran the ball 35 times. He attempted one pass as well that was incomplete. The day for Samson Evans, over 300 total yards and back to back state championships for the Iowa bound Samson Evans. Well, you see the emotion there. And you're going to see tears, tears of joy and tears of emotion leaving this stage with his teammates. As we've mentioned, these guys grew up together. They played together since fourth and fifth grade. And they'll go their separate ways, but they'll share something. That's two championships. Trophy presentations coming up next. Prairie Ridge back-to-back -back 6A state champions. Prairie Ridge wins the 6A state championship 28-21 over Nazareth Academy. The trophy presentations are brought to you by Menards, the Roadrunners of Nazareth Academy. Are up on the stage right now to get their second place trophy with their team captains, a 12 and 2 season for the Roadrunners and Coach Tim Racky. And they receive their medals. They get the second place trophy. The team is relatively young, Nazareth. By yeah. tomorrow morning, they'll be talking about next November already. Path to Champagne. Yeah, there's no doubt that the team, with especially with the skilled people they have back in the program they have established. Now the other side, Prairie Ridge, 28 game winning streak, but they got a few key people to replace. <laughs> that, that's tomorrow's problem, right? Yeah, tomorrow's today, problem. today they celebrate. What a championship game it was. Start off with teams making some mistakes, but as the momentum picked up. It was just punch counter punch the entire second half. The Roadrunners get their second place trophy. Take back to LaGrange Park and the state championship trophy is headed back to Crystal Lake. Second year in a row, third time Prairie Ridge has been champions. And two of those three runs, they have knocked off Nazareth Academy, beat them in the quarterfinals in 2011, 35 to seven. And now they're the first 6A repeat champions since Wheaton Warrenville South in 1995 and 1996. You see their captains making the way onto the podium. The trophy presentation presented by Menards with Coach Shrimp. Came down to one team making one last play, one more play, and it was Drew Norton who had the interception to clinch that victory in exhilarating fashion if you're a Wolves fan. Yeah, two interceptions on the day. Concielli had the first. Norton had the second. And those two, 22 and 77, they're both headed off to Iowa. I think Evans those, and Jenkins. I think those guys are kind of joined at the hip. Do you think, do you think <laughs> they enjoy each other's company? How cool is it that Jenkins is always the first one to join go. Evans, That's which has been over 100 times in his career in the end zone. Evans follows him into the end zone, and then Jenkins picks him up, right? Good way there. There they are. The captains get the 6A trophy. It's headed back to Prairie Ridge High School for the second year in a row. A 28 game win streak for the Wolves of Prairie Ridge and Coach Chris Shrimp. As they are ready to go celebrate with the rest of their teammates and the fans that made the trip now. And West. From longest, Crystal Lake. Longest play for scrimmage for Prairie Ridge was just 15 yards. Now they had the explosive <laughs> 78 return, yard punt yeah, return. Yeah. Punt return, kickoff return, but it was basically just punishing ground game. Drive it, move the sticks. Grind it, move the sticks. Move the sticks. And they did just that with a culminating drive by Evans. And then the final defensive stop in the end zone on the last player of the game. 
The IHSA Greatest Championship Game Series coming up next. Quinbard West and Wheaton Wardwell South in 2009. Two more games today. Lake Zurich in Batavia in 7A. Loyola Academy and Lincoln Way East in 8A. Stay tuned for two more great games. That'll do it from 6A. Prairie Ridge back-to-back -back state champions. For my partner, Mark Lindo, I'm Nathan Maliba. Enjoy the final two games of the day. Dave Bernhard and Hub Arkish will have those for you. Coming up later.